Hello, this is Chris. And Jared. With Jared. And we are just rolling because I, it's been too long. I haven't done anything for like two weeks. And part of that has been completely flipping Kevin's fault. Uh, they're both been pretty unavailable, but it's not entirely their fault. It's been busy time. But in the middle of it, Jared and, and, uh, well, Jonathan and I, we kind of share around a million and one stories. And it seems to me, I don't know if it seems like this to you. It seems like the singularity is pretty dang close or something. It's like, it's like stuff ramping up. There's so many different stinking stories that yeah, one of my friends was talking about this. He's like, he, he was like mad at some, I, I don't remember it was daily wire or whatever. He was like mad at them for not covering his specific thing he wanted to cover. And I was like, dude, there is so much to talk about right now. <laughs> I just, it's you know, unreal. Like, <laughs> it's it's like we all got super busy, so we couldn't do it very hard. So I, I just wanted to see if we could run through and try to make quick reference to all of them. So I don't have to do a whole <laughs> big long thing on each one of the dumb stories. So it's going to be almost kind of like meme review or just going through it. It drives my girlfriend crazy, but I take screenshots for six, seven years now of all the nuttiness going on. And so many of those screenshots, I never even dig back up because there's just too many things that are going on. And so I want to see, well, let's take a look at what all the screenshots of the things that I've just clipped in the past two weeks with all the nuttiness going on. And maybe just remember them and just make a quick comment on them and go and then get it out of the way potpourri style because uh sure. <laughs> just missing missing commenting on things but i don't have time for an hour on each one of them even though each one of them feels like they could be like an hour yeah there's a lot to say about a lot of the nonsense happening for sure but just look these are all just the screenshots i just loaded up to get on the gear <laughs> lately nice but let's see does it click or it doesn't click over to that but here first things first is that'll work once we start clicking through them Cause it'll just be fast through the stuff. Damn. Yeah. That, but I don't know if we'll hit every one of them. Of course, Elon just posted that yesterday. Biden's mistake is that he thinks he was elected to transform the country, but actually everyone just wanted less drama. <laughs> um, I mean, we got less mean tweets, so that's nice. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how much Biden thinks that he, I mean, I, maybe he does believe it in himself, but I just kind of think he's barely even there and the people. Yeah. I don't think him. Biden is capable of beliefs right now. Yeah, but I do think the people behind them think that it's a good opportunity to change the country. Oh, absolutely. No, that one, um, that, ma that makes me think of a, what is it, the Sam Harris tweet that's so, so grateful for the adults in the room. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I'm eating this, I'm eating these words one by one. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, um, <laughs> you, you hit the nail on the head. That's another thing that I forgot happened, but... Here's a, here's a, uh, Twitter thread that kind of gets into the same stuff I'm talking about here. Which one was it? Let's go through these. These, he's got a, a nice little four screenshot <laughs> things. Like a little refresher, uh, Jordan Powell. I don't even know who he is, but I know that he follows some of the similar people that I, that I follow. A little refresher on how much stupidity you've been subjected to recently. This is just recently. So this is kind of a quick one because he's got a a bunch of them so you can rifle through them. First shot, two plus two equals five. Working out makes you a Nazi. Unfettered combos are violence. Obesity is healthy. <laughs> this two plus two plus equals five thing, you should listen to James Lindsay's whole entire podcast on that. But this guy really tries to push and go the distance with that whole thing. And they get all into the constructs of constructs to, to try to make the case for it. And it's all just ridiculous. I'm, I'm not looked into that too much. Like I, I, I've known there are people that try to make that case, but like, what's the, what's the argument? It's ultimately like changing stuff to base three to, to make the case or to try to say 2.4 plus 2.7, but doing stuff two? like substituting out X's and Y's stuff we've already calculated for in, inside of calculus, you know, the, the so they're doing like different mathematical equations. It's like, yeah. It's just different. Plus math two. Uh, well, if two is a different number than two, then it could. Yes. <laughs> and it kind of, it, it is interesting because it kind of pans out how they think about all constructs that they think that because you magically call something different, that you've really made it different, but then they really do get into the concept of two plus two equals anything but four, because four is the repressive answer. Yeah. Yeah. No, I did get into an argument with somebody about numbers who was trying to explain to me that numbers are a social construct. And I was like, what the hell do you mean a social construct? He's like, the symbol two is a social construct. He's like, well, yeah, it like we, we created the symbol but we didn't create what the symbol represents. That, that part of it is not socially constructed. It's just objective fact. You have 
two particles, you have two particles, no matter what symbol you use to, so they think they have something here with this social construct thing. They, they think that it's, it's that and the word arbitrary, those two things, I, I hate those words so yeah. much. Well, and it is that exact argument taken to extremes. And this guy's like some math professor, I think even at Harvard or whatever. And he is just using that construct idea. The construct of a construct doesn't, you technically don't, if you have two apples and two apples, are those technically the same types of apples to even be counting? Uh, you know, the, the postmodernist Deleuze, he, he kind of had this whole idea that no two things on earth can be grouped together. <laughs> it's the same. Which is why I said particles in my, yeah. I have. I'm, I'm always, I know the language these people speak. So anytime I have the argument, I don't say two apples. I say two, like two apple particles or something like that. <laughs> yeah. It's so dumb. And it's, it's, it's just an exercise in deepities. If you really drag it out, that is kind of the quickest representation of what they're also trying to do with their concepts of gender or gender roles and all that sorts of stuff. But it's also so perfectly stupid. Cause I mean, that's right out of the book, 1984 and they, and they, You'll that's see the people craziest all... shit. Yeah. That's, I, I get so tired. Like, I, I remember getting a little bit annoyed with conservatives for overusing the term Orwellian. Yeah. And now I'm just, screw it. Yeah, use it all you want. Because they made a <laughs> ministry of truth, and now we got people trying to argue two and two or five. They couldn't even pick a different equation. They use the same exact one they use in the book. Not just like, that. You guys are like, so on the nose. <laughs> during so much of the Trump time, it, and this even happened back during the Trump time, you'd see people over Twitter use 1984 quotes for Trump and say, he, if he said two plus two equals five, people would believe it. And be like, do you guys know who the, uh, academic schmacademic professors are, who are actually making that argument? They're not Plus they're actually support. kind of proving him wrong because at his rallies now, he'll like try to hawk the vaccine yeah. and his crowd boos him. I never thought I I'd see his crowd boo him, but like. He brought up the Johnson and Johnson people and they were like, yeah. uh, what is this? And then he's, uh endorse Dr. Oz and people aren't down with that either. I heard about that. Do you, do you boost your fitness? Watch out. You'll unavoidably become right wing. I read that article. It's so stupid, but I've been hearing that stuff for five, six, seven years, but I do think there's some sort of truth to that there's a level of when I got out of school and academia and all that stuff, I, I mean, I've talked to people about it, said several times that I got into bodybuilding, there was some sort of level that physically pushing myself and actually figuring out like what's true and not true of my body in the world is one of the things that keeps you out of going down, being able to buy the construct crap at all. You, you, you kind of have to interact with the real world in a harsh way. I, lo I love the, the fat study stuff because that, that's one of the craziest ones that nobody was taking it seriously. I remember seeing this stuff in like 2014 or whatever. People would just laugh at the, the fat activists and it's starting to gain like slowly. I'm starting to see more mainstream lefties use the term fat phobia. It was one of my favorite memes is that one with Gus Fring from Breaking Bad straightening his tie and said, you work out because you want to be healthy. I work out because I'm fat phobic. We are not the same. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's a funny one. I, I couldn't say the exact number, but it's a heftier number that it would, it's a number that would make both of our uh, eyeballs pop out that have PhDs because of uh, fat studies. <laughs> and recently uh, Crowder even got one published and that's if, if, but go the, the, the one that then died from her fat. Yeah. <laughs> there was, yeah. But if Bogosian and Pluckrose and Lindsay got, got stuff published, they had to kind of think and work hard on it, maybe even four or five years ago. But now if like Crowder can just go do it and, and spend like an afternoon and get something published, like it, that's just kind of showing the, the continued trajectory of the stupidity of the humanity. Well, theirs was pretty stupid. They just had to use the right language because theirs was yeah, like, Trump. uh, what was it? Fat bodybuilding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it was there, way you stupid. Remember, you remember what they said, uh, why he got rejected the first time? Okay. Oh, remind me. That was one of my favorite parts. They got rejected for two things. One is because it said that fat bodybuilding would be the final frontier of fat studies. And they sent it back, the experts, you know, sent it back and said, well, okay. Um, if it's the final thing, then we'll be out of a job. So don't, it can't, <laughs> nothing can ever end the need for fat studies. And the other part is frontier, <laughs> our fat indigenous. Oh yeah. Not really? That's a, that, so those were the only criticisms that the experts had. You can't use frontier anymore. That's right. I guess I mean, it's high anything. It's so stupid. That's the same deal as the construct stuff though. It's like, oh, because you're building your body into something fatter. It is a level of bodybuilding. 
See, my favorite is Vosh. Uh, Vosh, he, he, he loves throwing around the term arbitrary. Like, uh, beauty standards are yeah. completely arbitrary. Like, what do, you, what do you mean arbitrary? You don't think there's anything at all biological? I don't know if he said that. He probably hasn't, but he, I, I, love, anyway. I love how he calls everything arbitrary, just thinking that, yep, I win. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all that, more of that Foucault stuff of like, who's to say what is what? And, oh, you're so deep. It's so deep. Yeah. Okay, fair. Unfettered conversation oh, is that's bad news. <laughs> I cannot believe this is one little article from New York Times, but I've seen so many of them. There's there's more in the in that long list of screenshots that I have of just people complaining and whining and saying, I can't believe people are are letting other people talk to each other. <laughs> Next set. Oh, eight white identity. <laughs> oh, I remember that. You remember that one? You can't be not racist. We all know that from uh you were Kennedy. Free speech is bad for you. Porn for kids is education. Oh man, this might get kicked off of Utah showing that. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, YouTube, but uh, that. Uh, oh yeah, that screenshot's terrifying. I've got another, I'm, I'm not even gonna leave it up there for very long, but I've got this friend and it's one of those screenshots that I have right there who said, go read all the books that they're trying to ban from you because this is 1984. You know, it's a, it's a leftist, uh, well, kind of a normie leftist saying it and it's like showing books like ulysses and all that sort of stuff and it's like we need to go read all the books they're trying to ban i'm like they're not trying to ban those books and yes please do go read them like go take a look and if people think that that book isn't one of the things gavin newsom i don't think i have the screenshot of it, but gavin newsom put up a post of himself on twitter saying reading all the books that have been banned and it is this book that has this stuff you see where oh something on the screen there that <laughs> might get this and he's literally just blowing someone it's yeah it's and porn. it's called uh what queer identities or something like that and then i have another screenshot of anybody wants it from new york librarians association where the new york librarians were recommending it as a book for kids to be put into a elementary school and it's one of the books that all those supposedly nazi parents who were complaining at the uh school boards were saying get this book out of the dumb schools let's see what else here watch you Elon Musk's vision of free speech will be bad for Twitter. <laughs> I've seen so many of those articles and I just can't even believe people. I kind of feel that's one of those things that 10 years ago, people wouldn't dare to say in a straight face way. They'd kind of try to make it like a bigger, windier argument. And then now I think they just say it. People used to at least put somewhat amount of thought into what they would say. I, I saw this thing earlier. I don't know if you have it on there, but it was, they, they try to, creep the intersectionality into any argument that they have. They, they always need to have certain amounts of representation for the argument to hold weight. And so they'll say things like, I, I don't remember who it was, but talking about who is disproportionately affected if abortions are banned. And on the list was the LGBT community. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody saw this like, what the hell are you I talking? even saw, I even saw a bunch of left-leaning people say, what the hell onto that one? There were a bunch. And then I, I saw some, one dude respond because somebody was like, well, wouldn't they be less affected by it? And somebody responded, I don't, I hope it was satire, but he, he just responded, less proportionate is still disproportionality. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are so stupid. But part of that is, is now they're just like a knee jerk. Like, you know, that you can shield something. I don't think I do have a screenshot of it, but one of the things is Jen Saki. I think today's her last day and they're going to bring in a black LGBT person and, and so much First ever. just a shield. It's a shield. You know, it's just now you can't criticize or say anything about this person, but it's the same thing as LGBT most affected, women most affected. It's like now that's just a knee jerk thing of trying to put a shield around something without even having to think about it at all. How did Biden not start out with a speaker of the house of color and of every, he's, several intersecting marginalized identities? He's a racist, he's the phobe. That's the, no, I, I get, I, I just, he started he, before he was even elected he was like oh if i nominated or he was saying his running mate would be a woman of color it is running mate and there's a several people in like his cabinet he put like the lady who's in charge of um the eeoc at the department of justice is what i mean it's oi and that that lady is like one of those persons who believed that and even said stuff out about whites are not human like they're different <laughs> which candy also believed candy also believed that Candy believe that whites are some sort of alien race? Well, I mean, how else are we going to fight racist discrimination, but with anti-racist discrimination? <laughs> Thank goodness for them. If nobody sees my costume, who am I? 
how do I define my gender if no one is watching me? <laughs> Does a tree fall in the woods? Does it try to person trans if there's no other person around to look at it? <laughs> Please look at me. <laughs> masks don't make sense, but do it anyways. That one's one of the, I mean, the Portland's Wait, put masks spat in. Mask mandates are illogical. So what? From the Atlantic. There's been so many articles like that. Oh, 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 yes. shit. The Great Reset is a conspiracy, but here's the website. And not only is there like a website, like every single person is listed on it is somebody who's in it and it talks about the Great Reset constantly. Like John Kerry's like a constant contributor and talker in there. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's just, are. it's so ridiculous that they, they, they try to pretend like that's not something that they're at least talking about. The, the farthest thing that I'll say that it isn't a conspiracy theory, and it, I think it totally is a big grand conspiracy theory uh, under the actual definition of what one is, like a real conspiracy to do stuff, is that they're, they're a bunch of dipshits and they probably won't be able to pull it off like they're imagining, but they are trying to pull it off, you know? Yeah, I, I did see uh, one of my lefty friends posted something recently. It was like this con comic like this boomery lefty comic that it was it, what was it? it was just this dude standing there and like, anything i can't understand is a conspiracy theory or whatever and i, I didn't want to ruffle any fe i usually will ruffle feathers but this person is a little older so i don't really care to but just i, don't, I just wanted to say like if, if you start defining every single opposing opinion to you as a conspiracy theory then what do you have left to fight i mean that's really easy yeah, it's just, to do it. It's just changing the definitions of everything. If I change the like, definition of conspiracy theory to be anything that goes against the popular mainstream narrative, then, well, I'm, I don't have to argue. Anything we can put a label on, thought stopping label, and now we don't talk about it, and this is verboten now. Which is, it's half of why I'm even going over this or you ever even started talking about this stuff, because I think, especially in like the ex-Mormon world, there's, it used to be that the Mormons were closed off to everything. And why are the midnight Mormons talking about all the fun stuff? If it's true or not true, or if they're, they're making jokes about it or acting like they might half believe in it. Although I think they say right out several different times that they're, they're being meme level jokey about some of the stuff. But they're allowed to openly talk about stuff. And then over on the supposedly open side. It's gotten so verboten to bring up or talk about or think about anything. And then there, th maybe there are some things that are overly ridiculous to be talking about in good company, but they, they concept creeped so many things. Like we, we could not be talking about any one of these things to John Lynn on John Lynn's podcast or, <laughs> or on any one of the ex-Mormon websites. So we're breaking the ex-Mormon code by uh, even looking at this stuff you know oh dude yeah I, I i there's been like a mormon awakening it's this weird thing like my wife's extended family they're all you know very very lds and uh i'm obviously not <laughs> and i i always i thought they wouldn't like me for the longest time i was like ah, i should probably just stay away they they're, they're probably mad at me for they probably think i corrupted their daughter or whatever and <laughs> And we went to this family reunion a couple of years ago. I talked to her grandma for like two minutes and we both just like hated the government. And now she's like, yeah, we're on the same team. And now that all of them were in this big political group chat with a lot of her aunts and uncles. And, um, they're all willing to talk about a lot of things that a lot of my ex Mormon friends are not willing to talk about at risk. Dude, why are they the open ones now? I, no, it's I, the craziest I, shit ever. I was talking about crazy ex Mormons were never particularly open people, but yeah. I, I, they've become way more closed off and dogmatic lately. Midnight Mormons did the hollow earth today. And I think that, I think Quake was always kind of like doing like a little bit of a troll saying that he fully believes it. And then like any good troll does, it leaves you kind of wondering, but <laughs> they have so much fun with it. They're just having fun with it. And there's, there's no reason in the world that, that you shouldn't be able to have fun just chit chatting about any sort of one thing. But beyond that, every single one of these things that we're looking at right here so far, these things aren't fake. And there's still stuff that you can't even talk about in, in very smart people company, but whatever. Straight men in bromance is kiss cup and stand around naked together. <laughs> I don't even know what that one's from now. You're yeah, in that lobster group, right? Oh yeah. Were you, how long have you been in there? Oh, half a year. Oh, okay. It, it was a couple of years back. There was this big, <laughs> hilarious argument over cuddling with with your bros or it was Morgan Aldous, the guy that made the group. <laughs> oh yeah. And every now and then you'll see some troll post from him where he talks about 
cuddling the bros. Was he, he's joking all, or was he really doing it? No, I think he was really doing it. <laughs> I don't he didn't sound like he was really doing it. But why, again, why are these Mormon guys the interesting ones? <laughs> the, the ones in the lobster group are all pretty interesting. They, they're, they're weirdo. They're more open to talk about that stuff. They're funny guys, though. You know, some of them. <laughs> but, uh, uh, refusing to use someone's correct pronouns violates their human right. Canada tribunal rules. Oh, Jordan Peterson was wrong, wrong, wrong. What a, what a grifter and a liar. <laughs> grateful. So grateful. The, the genius award goes to even Rex Candy. The way he says it, here's a guy who can't define racist wins genius grant. I always kind of refer back to John McCorder, who, who was a very polite, nice, smart dude. And he straight out, if you go on his podcast with him and Glenn Riley, they straight out say, even Rex Candy is a not smart person. <laughs> <laughs> They're just John not McCorder even embarrassed is, about it. John McWhorter is really nice, but he also ha he has that cadence to his voice that I think he could probably hurt my feelings more effectively than anywhere. Like if he tried. Yeah, he's got that, <laughs> a little bit of that kind of hobby, <laughs> super serious thing going on. But, yeah, but all of them. I've never heard him say anybody else in the world is just not a smart person except for. <laughs> I, I started listening to a little bit of Candy and I think I agree with him. Kendi? Oh, God, no. Oh, I thought you said Good right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree with Kendi. Um, remember Larry Elder was a black face of white supremacy. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Don't, I remember this one. Don't go down the rabbit hole. People think it's bad for you from the New York Times. I remember that one saying, don't go look at stuff. Don't, don't research it too hard. That especially, I think that came out right around the Hunter Biden thing. I'm going to post that in an ex-Mormon circle and see, <laughs> see how they handle that. Well, there's one of those things that John, John Larson said, and I, and I caught him kind of realizing what he was saying about, don't do your own research. Don't do your own research when he was talking about his new uh, political bias. But then they have to realize also that their whole entire Mormon, ex-Mormon world is about go do your own research to, to no, figure know, stuff that, out. Um, that was during the Rod Meldrum interview too. And John DeLynn's like, I don't think this is an area where you're super confident on. And John Miller or Meldrum was like, no, I, I've done quite a bit of research on this actually. And Dylan was like, well, I know what you mean by you did research. Like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> you know how many times I've heard you like harp on the church for saying, don't go after and, and don't go after sources that are clearly trying to degrade the church. How do you not see this? It, <laughs> Yeah, I, I completely have what well, I'm, I guess, kind of what Elon Musk is pushing out is the idea that more information is better. Humans can sort it out. People, some people will believe weird things, but we'll, we'll all get closer to truth. The more, I mean, you aren't helping anything by denying access to anybody or trying to shame them out of research and anything, you know? Yeah. Especially I, when like you, you totally nuke the credibility of your fact checkers. When they start fact checking memes that are obviously jokes, it's like, <laughs> did you see that? I, I might have sent you that one. It was for, during the Will Smith slap. It was, I don't remember who it was, but it was somebody oh, reacting yeah. to it. It and was, it was a, obviously a, a joke, but like the fact checkers get on there and they're like, actually, that was from a different one. I don't care. It like, it, yeah, it's what the, it's, it was, if the other celebrities had actually reacted that way. Thanks, fact checkers. <laughs> I really wish somebody, there probably is somebody who made like a master list like this of all the lying fact check situations that have come <laughs> up. There's so many of them. Dear men, stop working out. Uh, Hunter Biden it was a disinfo thing, whatever. Blah. This guy, this, who is a gal? This a like, whatever. This person, yeah, Jonathan Streeter introduced me to him. And I actually even saw Jonathan Streeter say something to Delin about this, that Delin was pumping this guy up, gal, whatever. Really? Delin's ideas. And Del Streeter said to him, hey, this guy says that young kids are kinky and you should let them be kinky. And what's this phrase say? These days, the narrative is that transgender people will come into bathrooms and abuse little girls. The supposed purity of the victims has remained stagnant. There are no princesses. Little girls are also kinky. Your kids aren't as straight and narrow as you think. Jeez. And Streeter showed that to, to to Lynn after he posted like some hour long diatribe of nuttiness from this person. And whoa, this is so great. Oh, so, oh super smart, super great. And uh, Streeter said, this guy is not somebody to like prop up as an oracle. And Lynn said, oh, I didn't know. I hadn't looked into it. And they, he just left him up. That's because that sounds exactly like uh that uh foucault right the children are sexual and you're being oppressive by pretending that they're not oh yeah and that's the that's a little slippage they're slipping into that stuff constantly just little bits little bits more little bits more 
somebody willing to say it kind of push back is that dialectic stuff of like push a little bit, pull back, push a little bit, push a little bit, say the outrageous thing. Oh, now it's pretty normal to say the outrageous thing. Being normal is transphobic. That's, that's kind of always been the, the idea of uh, queer theory. People just didn't know it because they hadn't read very much of it, but the status quo or even being any sort of cis or normal, normal uh, person. It, it normal. Is, Careful there, transphobic. Yeah. It is transphobic and that, and that really is at the core of their ideas. And that's one of the reasons there's so much of the stuff. Like, do you see this week, like Exmo Lex came out as bi. He yeah, he's on it. And there, there was this other lady who in Lehigh got suspended from school because she said she was queer and all her kids were coming to her. Oh, I saw that video. That lady turns out is also married to a man you know straight all that stuff so her her queer identity is probably another one of these this uh trend you know trendiness of declaring or claiming yourself some sort of identity when it really has nothing to do with anything you have the uh like john delin's daughter who's an ace an asexual and then another daughter who's a demisexual and that's just asexual especially for young gals probably just you're probably not there yet you know and then the demisexual is you're only attracted to people with whom you have an emotional connection. Yeah. Okay. I had a, I had a friend make a big deal about, she came out like years ago as demisexual as did she acted like it was this big deal. And I asked her what it was and then she explained it to me and I was like, you sound just like a normal woman. Yeah. Like, Cause I mean, that's kind of the difference between men and women sexually is <laughs> men will have sex with anything that moves. Women won't quite have sex with anything that moves generally. And then she just unfriended me. She didn't say, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I just, well, I said, you just came out as a normal woman. And yeah. then I, I was like, she hasn't responded in a day or two. And I said, <laughs> oh, bad <laughs> <at> friend. <laughs> oh no. no. Yeah, when they even go along with that one, I mean, there's a million one of those, but there's other one like sapiosexual, which is I'm only attracted oh, to the way you, intelligence or how you think or something. That, and that's so much of it is you're not some rando identity. You're you're just an, you're just a regular person, but you're trying to fit into this thing. Or I think there's a completely level of you almost think it's bad, it's phobic to just say that you're just a heterosexual mm -hmm. this person. Yeah, the sapiosexual one's funny because I always just view that as this covert way of claiming that I'm really smart. <laughs> because if I'm only attracted to smart people, it sort of stands to reason that I consider myself smart. I don't want to be braggy and call myself smart, so I'm just going to put a, a sexuality on it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's all ridiculous, but I think it's all saying that you want to be part of the alphabet identity group because you need to be in that or your life's not okay unless you're in that now. And there's so much pressure to be in it. But then unfortunately, some of them get pressured to do some of the more life-changing versions of that. And I do think there's a healthy amount of uh, social contagion in that. Oh yeah. That's that one right there, that fight bigotry, 98% of straight men <laughs> won't have sex with the trans woman or whatever it is. Th that one's funny because I think with the whole trans movement, they moved way too quickly. The, yeah. The, the racism movement, they moved very slowly and crept in and, and so trans, the trans movement did this thing where they just immediately started, they wanted to catch up to the race movement. So they started throwing the label transphobe at everything. And all it, all it really did in effect was just every time I'm called a transphobe now, I'm like, whatever. Yeah. Again, well, there, there, there's a, some sort of level that this is like conversion therapy, you know, like you're trying oh, yeah. to convert me into being sexually attracted to something I'm not sexually attracted to. How is that different than conversion therapy? The, the like, best part is like, so they don't really say stuff like that anymore. Most people who fight against it, they don't talk about straight men. Cause you can say anything you want about straight men. We're the oppressors, but you can't say anything you want quite yet about lesbians. So they love to like, that. that's one of the best ways to do it. Like as a woman. A lesbian woman, a bigot, if she won't have sex with a trans woman. But just like anybody else that we've all learned to preach since the 90s when we started getting cool and open for sure with uh, people being of different persuasions, the whole concept was you can be what you are, what you are. And part of that is that if you're a straight person, it's okay to be a straight person. 
it's okay. Well, that, that sounds like that old 4chan thing of uh, it's okay to be white that they had going. <laughs> and, and then you say that to see if somebody freaks out and say, how dare you say it's okay to be white. Like, Probably what, the what best prank of all time. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. To understand Trump's support, we must think in terms of multicultural, <laughs> multiracial whiteness. This is my, my Venezuelan girlfriend's found out several different times that she's uh, white until it comes down to corporate pandering <laughs> to her about some sort of thing like that. But, uh, but that always shocks her to find that out. But is she white passing or white adjacent? <laughs> she's white. She's white adjacent. She's not white pass. Oh man. But, uh, um, straight black men are the white people. <laughs> people. I remember that. Article. That's I love that one. And yeah. I swear to God, I probably wrote that. <laughs> I think I have this alter persona who just when I sleep and my body gets up drinks just an ass load of vodka and then writes vice headlines for them. Oh something. yeah. Well, look at these four right here. The fire, but mostly peaceful. <laughs> these, these four things right here, just right on the screen, the, the cis is, is trans and multicultural whiteness and black people, the white people, black people and, and fire, but mostly peaceful pro protest. All four of these. I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, if you wrote them for the, the onion or something, they'd be like, yeah, that's not that funny. It's just kind of too, it's just kind of, you're being absurd and ridiculous. Like what, what it, whatever, like it wouldn't even be funny. You'd just be let you're just being a goof. And now it's just. No, I know that satire has changed because you can't, because it used to be, you had to like make something just a couple steps more absurd than where we are right now. But. Like, it's hard to think what would be more absurd than right now. So all you got to do is you take reality and you rephrase it in words that are simpler and point out how absurd it is. That's, that's why the Babylon Bee is so popular now. That's all it does. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I remember they re removed this rock because like somebody used some like derogatory term for the rock a hundred years earlier or something like that. Cause the rock was dark. They called it something like in 1908, like a few times, not even like generally. And so they had to remove the whole entire rock playing God to fight global warming. This stuff's like so much the Marcuse stuff. Marcuse like generally believed in there. There's so many of the, the modern day left who might not know, or might know that Marcuse really has shaped their whole entire world. And part of what his belief it is to bring in the whole utopian future is we generally genuinely need to become different beings than the, you know, just down to our, down to our genes. We need to change everything to, to usher in the future. Menstrual products for boys. <laughs> the knitting community is reckoning with racism. That's where Car Carrie Smith comes out of. She got, she, her <laughs> woke breaking point was in the knitting community. It's just invading everything. Oh yeah. That was actually one of the early ones. It, it, yeah. 2019, it was in it before that. I mean, it was. I might have mentioned it last time, but my, like, I, I never thought I'd hear my mom talk about weird niche political race <laughs> nonsense until it invaded her world. And, and they had that whole drama on the bachelor. Oh my God. Where like the, they, that, that, that went that to an antebellum party. Well, the, the contestant went to an antebellum party and they're calling her racist or whatever. And the host, it was the, the, the most, host like, said, like, the, oh, calm down. It was the weakest defense possible. He, he just said like, okay, look, I'm not saying she's not a terrible, terrible piece of shit. <laughs> so just say, maybe, maybe we should, maybe we should hear her out. And then like that dude, he's, he'd been the host of the bachelor forever. And he had to resign. <laughs> or, yeah, or that, say, well, maybe she isn't racist because she went to a party one time. That was about the extent of the pushback that Dawkins gave to uh, what's her name on the ele elevator gate thing back in the atheist convention thing to uh, Rebecca Watson. Just, it was basically just a, oh, come on, let's not get so. And then that's why Dawkins is the enemy nowadays. I could just been the enemy for a while. <laughs> yeah. Everything is white supremacy. I remember this click. You have to look at all this stuff underneath the thing that's considered like, this is, this is covert white supremacy. Oh, it doesn't so a little bit, uh, covert white supremacy and then real white supremacy. And some of the stuff that's covert white supremacy is like blaming the victim or all lives matter, or make America great again, or you're so articulate. I never, so it's mostly those, uh, microaggressions and all that stuff. Eurocentric beauty standards. Oh, you remember, I don't think I have it here, but I sent you this thing last week of the NPR doing a thing about a beauty privilege. Uh -huh, yeah. Fetishizing really? POC. That was when we, that was when we theoretically created the, the national beauty department or whatever, where you have a beauty czar that makes sure that each number one to 10 is equally represented in 
in, in employment. So you have to have just as many ugly people in employment as pretty people. Yeah. We're raising our, oh, this is one kind of recent people are upset that trying to transfer kids isn't working and doing articles about it. Having a baby, antinatalism, having a baby in 2021 is environmental vandalism. <laughs> it's, it's so crazy. Like most of this, almost, not almost all this, every one of these are coming from real time, big time, big publications. And there's some sort of level where like all the, <laughs> the, I'm the Lins and Larsons of the world who say you must only read the Atlantic and the New York times and all that <laughs> stuff. And you try to tell them that this wacky stuff's happening. And they go, no, no, no. And I'm saying, I use Larson the link because we pick on his podcast. But when I say that type of person, like I know infinity of that type of person. Yeah. And there's, there's some sort of level where I say, are you actually reading these magazines? Are you reading things? Are you seeing the headlines? Are you seeing the stuff that they're talking about? Like, I don't think you guys are actually reading your approved sources either. Because there's plenty of wackiness in there. We do not even need to go to Alex Jones sources. Oh God, no. Men can get pregnant. Sex is a spectrum, and that's I never forget that. The, I never uh, forget gender. that Jordan Peterson one, uh, one of his first big interviews on that Canadian channel, where like the first thing that professor says to him is basically the idea that there is such a thing as biological sex is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's what is his very first one of his very first uh popularity things like i says it doesn't exist and i can i can unpack that for you i, I, hate, point where I hate the that. word i hate that word <laughs> yeah it's just because i can, I can scramble up your rubik's cube for you i can take your rubik's cube and i can go like that <laughs> the secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 elections i remember when Frank <laughs> came out with that what do they call it they called it like engineering or um somehow saving it or uh, there was some word that they used that was uh Fortify. That's a, we fortified the elections. That's what they, <laughs> oh God. Oh yeah. The removing reading, and writing the myth or take some of those other clips I have is how they're removing all sorts of testing from LSATs and from getting into schools to everything. Even like Cambridge is removing finals testing and all that stuff. And if that, our standards are, if, if our standards for people are wrong, what we ought to do is, um, obliterate anything resembling a standard. Yeah. Why it's not grooming. Okay. We admit it's happening in schools, but we promise it's not grooming. <laughs> Ab <laughs> Abolish private property. Well, they've been saying that one forever. Yeah. 1984 is actually good. We need big brother to beat this virus. <laughs> Holy hell. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that one. I think that's the LA time. Uh, actually wearing a mask can help your child learn. <laughs> It's so not true. Yeah. It's so much stuff like the, they just cram down your throat. It's just like so much going on right now. Well, I got, I've got another uh, thread right after this. This There's so much that's just intuitively nonsense. Stupid. Yeah. Okay. That's the end of those. Let me pull this other thread up. So this is kind of a good little list of uh, that, uh, what do they call it? Kettle logic. I brought up kettle logic before. Yeah, yeah. It's like a little bit of a, the concept is of somebody is trying to argue something and they give you they just kind of descending different answers that don't make sense with the previous answer. Like, uh, the, it comes from the word kettle because you borrowed a kettle and you broke the kettle and it comes back and says, no, no, I didn't break the kettle. No, I didn't borrow the kettle. No, I did. It is broken, but it was, I found that it was broken that way. No, and you just keep giving like five different answers and, and your answers don't coincide with each other. So you're just jumping from thing to thing. I always use it in terms of like the super like 4chan Hitler apologist that like say the Holocaust didn't happen. It wasn't that bad. It should have been like, ne it'll come again or something like that. That's yeah. And it's all over the place. Well, I mean, he's got a bunch of examples of it here. So we aren't performing mastectomy on teenagers, but if we were, it would be totally fine and normal. And they also are. Oh, well, they absolutely are. I've, I've had that argument with so many people on Facebook where there's that I'll TikTok say, maybe, lady maybe we need to quit. Yeet the teats. Yeah. She's a doctor yeah. who brags she's, about it on TikTok. She's a, it, did you ever watch I am jazz? Oh, but I've heard about that. I'm, That's I'm pretty terrible. Watch. She's one of the big doctors on that. Um, she is. I didn't know she was actually on the show. She didn't, she was on the show in the last season. Jazz was like an intern for her. And I'm pretty sure it's her anyway. She's this Irish doctor. And yeah, they, I've been in so many arguments with people where like they're saying that you're trying to hurt trans people you, you want trans rights gone or whatever I was like no maybe let's just stop convincing uh young girls to get their boobs lopped off and they're like that's not happening and i'm like wait are you not paying attention it's absolutely happening and 
there's even, I've found some there it, is, I think it's called an orectomy is what they try oh, to call it, where they, where they just, uh, it's for young boys. They just castrate them. Oh, just, they remove the testicles and they keep. So didn't something really bad happen to jazz? Like didn't jazz get. Oh dude, jazz. That story is sad as hell because jazz was on. Pugin haven't Wars. they, re haven't they removed everything from jazz? I thought I heard. I'm not sure about that, but the, the surgery went terribly because they, so jazz was on hormone blockers from a very young age, did not go through male puberty. And then on live TV had to, everybody had to find out that jazz has a micro penis because there wasn't enough tissue to do the surgery. And then one of the suggestions that the doctor had was, okay, we're going to put this saline balloon in your scrotum and we're going to every day inject yeah, a little bit more saline in it until it's like the size of a grapefruit or something like that. Then we'll have extra tissue to work with. And, and then jazz went through several reconstructive surgeries on it. Just absolute hell. I have nothing but sympathy for the kid. It's not. How on earth are we in this world that the parents of people around them and even television shows around them are allowing that stuff. It's unreal. Oh yeah, it's evil. Look at this. I like this title right here. I just noticed it. Superfluous elite center right Foucault curious and anti mid Twitter. <laughs> Foucault curious. We aren't promulgating esoteric racial ideology, but if we were, it would be totally fine and normal. I've seen you get into that exact uh, argument a few times just in the last week. Oh my God. The people trying to defend critical race theory who have no idea what it even is. And it's difficult. Like it's a squirmy subject, but they're trying to tell me that it's just, oh, you don't want us to teach our kids actual American history. And it's like, well, I, I do. That's not what critical race theory is. <laughs> but but it's, this, it's all this other stuff that's totally wild and crazy. Oh, well, that's good too. It's good. Well, yeah. We're not teaching him that white people are universally racist and the only race capable of racism. But if we were, that would be fine. Yep. More of it here. We aren't hijacking professional licensing and accreditation to perform ideological indoctrination, but if we were, it would be totally fine and normal. <laughs> uh, and they are, we aren't suspending procedural norm normals and professional standards, but if we were, it'd be totally fine and normal. I mean, it's just, yeah. We are undoing educational standards in the schools and replacing math with, math with ideological indoctrination, but if we were, it'd be totally fine and normal. We aren't decriminalizing crime, but if we were, it'd be totally fine and normal. <laughs> um, this is, I, I've seen every single one of these things. Mm -hmm. the other. We aren't explicitly allocating medical care based on race, but if we were, that was the right in Utah here, but if we were, it'd be totally fine and normal. We aren't laundering. Uh, national, national security disinfo on Russian bounties. But if we were, it'd be totally fine and normal. Uh, yeah, they, I mean, they're just, uh, is that Joe just, Biden, <laughs> Joe Biden, he can finish a sentence, but if he yeah. were, that'd be totally fine. And <laughs> <laughs> That's we, I mean, we're actually living now. <laughs> the addicts aren't shooting up on the subway, but even if they are, it's totally fine and normal. We're not pretending obesity is healthy, but even if we are, it's totally fine and normal. We aren't asking the government to censor our opponent's speech, but even if we are, it's totally fine. And normal. <laughs> People aren't increasingly afraid to speak clear, self-evident truths, but if we are, that's totally fine and normal. The NIH, CDC, and FDA provide reliable information, but even if they don't, it's totally fine and normal. Toddlers aren't still being masked in New York City to placate communitarian hysterics, but if they are, it's totally fine and normal. It's all totally fine and normal. Experts say it's actually a good thing. If you're a good person, you'll say it's a good thing too. <laughs> Please be careful about misinformation and disinformation. Oh my God. So I'll get to that's more the recent stuff that I've screenshot. We'll pump through them. Well, let's just see what, yeah. what I've got there. Cause this literally is, I'm just kind of stuck up all the stuff I recently posted. Let's, let's see. Cause I see even more things than I actually screenshot. So I think it's even kind of interesting to see what stuff I bothered to take the time to screenshot. I need to start screenshotting more. I usually do, but like, ah, oh man, you gave me that, you sent me that thread on Twitter. I really wanted to do a video on how to be an ally because oh, yeah. it, like it's, I, it's a losing game and everybody knows that, but that one, that, that thread really showed it. Which one? The, it was some, uh, native American guy. I can't remember his name, but. His Twitter got suspended, so now it, the whole thing is down and I didn't scream. Oh, yeah, it. I remember that one now, yeah. This is a good video by uh, 
Watson about other types of social contagion of all the different young people on TikTok who've now decided they have dissociative identity disorder because they've heard about it and they saw other people on TikTok do it. So now they say that they have it as well. Oh yeah. You, so, I've, I've watched those TikToks. I'm in a lot of groups that are making fun of it. Like you don't have DID, idiot. You just want attention. And, and they'll, the amount of TikTokers who claim to have dissociative identity disorder and then claim to somehow get their personality switch on a TikTok. It's, it's funny to watch, but like it's funny in a way that you sob as you're laughing your ass off. That's that same guy here. You're not permitted to make methodological critiques or point to statistics or ask meaningful questions. You're not allowed to bring up competing hypotheses or discuss predictable second or third degree, third order consequences. It's all sacrosanct. I think the reason I pulled, pulled that one up is because I know right back at the beginning of the 15, 14 days to flatten the curve. First thing I said is like, <laughs> this is going to kick our economy in the dick down the line. Oh yeah. And how much pushback I got on that one. It's just such like an obvious truth. It's just an obvious second and third order consequence. And it, almost anybody on my Facebook was like, no, shut up. It'll be fine. Well, their defense to that is always like, we don't have any data to suggest that shutting down everything in our economy. Yeah would be bad for it. It's like, yeah, we've never done it, idiot. I don't that feel comes, like I need data. <laughs> that comes up with the trans stuff so much too. Like, we don't have any data that giving kids hormones from a very, very young age for their entire lives is bad. Yeah, because no idiot's done that before. Well, I know that's that's the one I was actually going to bring up is I've been in that argument so many times where they're, they're, I say like, we shouldn't give puberty blockers to kids. They're like, well, I mean, if they just, if they want to have you know, if, if they, if they change their minds, we just take them off the puberty lockers, they'll go through puberty and, uh, there'll be no problem. There's no ill effects. Like they say there, that there has to be Ill effect. Yes. They say the same thing uh, with the surgery. When you get into the surgery and say like, maybe we should not let young girls chop their boobs off. They're like, well, if they want boobs, they can just get implants later. You give me oh my God. It's so ridiculous and obvious that you're messing with the developmental cycles of kids and it's not going to be a good thing. And I don't need some vouch type person to say, what studies, what studies do you have to show that studies say study? There's no studies. I don't have study, but I, like, I feel as somebody who has no knowledge. There will be, there will be, there will, I feel, oh, there will be. be good. I feel 100% confident. I don't feel 100% confident in a lot of things, but I feel 100% confident that delaying puberty until you're like 19 or 20 is probably not a good thing. I'm right there with you. I will, I will sign off on that. And we can say that's two people who said it. There's your study. And then that yeah, seems yeah. like a university study nowadays. Pfizer says, do not breastfeed. Baby formula runs scarce. Bill Gates promotes new artificial breast milk technology all within two weeks. That's a little bit conspiracy theory minded, but uh, that's the type of crap that happens lately. <laughs> that's why people go like people are going schizo, man. I don't blame them. I, yeah. I just saw it. I might have sent it to you. I saw an ad for Gatorade. It was this like it was talking about fitness, and it was just like obese woman doing yoga or whatever. And I was like, this is the kind of shit that makes people go schizo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Like, okay, somebody, somebody's trying to tear our nation down, right? It's gotta be in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. That's what Josh Slocum's disaffected podcast is, is that he, he really believes that in general, we're trying to push our societies to types of mass psychosis, like types of mass borderline personality and types of mass, uh, histrionic disorder and types of mass uh, schizophrenia, you know, well, and actually yeah, with histrionic disorders. And Dela Ouz, that's actually one of his big pushes is that we all should think like schizophrenics. <laughs> that's, that's another subject. Oh, do you see this one? Look at the arm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But, sure, possibly trying. <laughs> I've never seen one where this, this one woman had, had that done and like, she's like, it's been two years. It was her entire forearm. Because I, I guess if you're going to get a, a fake penis, you're going to get a huge one, <laughs> you know, like, no, he's my whole forearm, man. It was like, it's like this 90 degree angle that goes down and she's like, I'm going to lose my job because I'm getting carpal tunnel and I need to type a lot in my job. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, I look, I, I, I feel bad for you because so many people just told you, yeah, this will make everything better. If you just rip skin off here, put it down here. And I, I feel bad, but I'm also like, how would, how did you not know there would be there? 
like long term terrible consequences of that. Yeah. But what's the point of that that post too? <laughs> it's like who's that for? Well it makes me think of that blues clues thing where they're doing the yeah. parade and you get that random beaver that has the mastectomy scars. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I'm sorry because because I I have a long track record of this. If I ever took on some actual like trans activists, they would not like this, but I believe it's hundred percent the same thing that coming from the world of 20 years, 30 years, almost of weightlifting, bodybuilding, football, and all that stuff that I have a track record of even from then being like, no, don't take steroids. No, don't mess with your hormones. No, don't, don't do that stuff. Like that I not just, I think any sort of, even to the level, I mean, I think maybe there's some level like 40 and 50 year old and I haven't, I haven't done it yet. I haven't felt the need to. But there might be some stuff and we don't have good studies in history on this that like as we're getting older that getting on testosterone replacement might be helpful but especially if it's not there it's not i don't think it's ever helpful just to tack it on to to mm -hmm. make yourself something that you're not but um, but but at least in like the adult world you, you have the consent of people who because yeah it could totally mess you up if you get on testosterone replacement as an adult but at least like i don't know if the we, we have I to just, do this in, in, in all progress, I guess, is to like, some people take the risks, but it, the thing is they know the risks and they're not children. That That's my huge beef with the pure. For sure. It's not children, yeah. not lifetime yeah, affecting stuff. Teams. But I think yeah. across the board, every single human in the world needs to get to some sort of level of integrating their life with what their body is. And you're not going to be making your life happier. Even women with, with breast implants or whatever. There's a lot of stuff coming out that that stuff might have always been pretty toxic to the female body to be putting in there and, and all that stuff. And so I just kind of like have this general, it's not like I was crazy hardcore. I agree a hundred percent on the libertarian thing of like an adult can do what they want to do themselves. But I just have a general idea that all humans in history, if you leave your body be, do, do reparative medical stuff, but don't, going and ripping stuff to shreds because you think it's going to be happier cosmetically. I think is that's never been a, uh, an, an idea to become a fully realized person. I just, I just don't believe it. Oh yeah. If, they, if, if it's a medical thing, I, I don't know. I watched, have you ever watched that show botched? Oh yeah. Oof. That's, that's, that grosses me out because watching it, I'm starting to think, oh yeah, maybe reconstructive surgery, all that stuff is fine. I don't know if obviously do what you want with your body, but I don't know if any all the different surgery is a good idea. And, Obviously. celebrities that have done stuff to their faces and that stuff and it's gotten wild and then i actually yeah. in the modern world know of people regular people starting to get enough access to mess up their faces enough and all that sort of deal so i really think that transgender people imagine that it's it's crazy different everybody's got like mental issues and mental like what there's so many different people who are living and walking around they have different illnesses or whatever and they're perfectly fine saying my thing's a mental illness you know oh yeah and and it, it should be that way. I think that there's even people living with or even like their mental illnesses. I think bodybuilding on a level is a, a level of OCD. It's a level of obsessive compulsive disorder. I and, wish I had that. And most of them can just be like, yeah, the, yeah, I got that. I live with it and I work with it, but I'm not going to go around and saying that like, it's a healthy, perfectly, my life would be healthier without that, that extreme way of thinking about my body. You know, that was when I completely lost faith in the world health organization was in 2015 when they took gender dysphoria off of the list of mental illnesses. Yeah. And I had all these friends that were celebrating like, oh, finally. And I'm like, look, this isn't like a transphobic thing. I'm not against trans people. I just think that it like every other type of body dysphoria. You guys are mental illness. illness phobic. You guys are mental illness phobic. <laughs> no, There's yeah, people with, yeah. people are perfectly fine being and having mental illnesses and can even like, but just need to learn to live with their mental illness, you know? Yeah, like, uh, like eating disorders, anorexia is a, it's a type of body dysphoria. And we're definitely okay calling that mental illness, uh, body integrity dysphoria, where, where people like, they think they need to be an amputee or whatever that that's an example of body dysphoria. We don't lop the arm off the person yet anyway. And it's like, Maybe. Or tell the anorexic person like, yeah, you do need to, you do need to lose a little bit more weight. I see what Look, you're saying. What can I tell her? It's, it's her truth. She thinks she's massive and needs to lose weight. Yeah. I think this all started. Did you remember? I don't think it all started, but one of the big, big cultural things kind of pushing on it. Did you ever see that movie, uh, Lars and the real girl? Mm, no. I think it was, 
it was like 2010 ish or whatever it was. It's what's his name. He's kind of a big star, but he has like a fake girlfriend. Then she's, she's like a sex doll, but he really <laughs> believes that she's real. And it's a serious movie, you know, and the whole entire premise of the whole entire movie is to say, uh, literally it doesn't affect you. It's to say, not just doesn't affect me, but the way his way out of this or his way to deal with this is that if the whole entire town accepts that that sex doll is a real girl. And so the whole town has to go and learn that we all need to accept that Lars sees that doll as a real girl. God. And yeah. It's, it's what's the name? He's a famous actor. Let's see. Oh, that was James Lindsay noticing that Governor Spencer Cox in Utah you know, and kind of gets behind the Love Loud concert from the Imagine Dragons. He is, he is surprised to find it out. I was going to mention something like he should watch a, the, he should watch that documentary by the Imagine Dragons. What's it called? The, uh, oh, uh, I don't remember. I, my, yeah, one of my, my sister in law watched it and then she was like, I'm not Mormon anymore. And, Oh, so it made a big convincing thing too. I thought it was a very self-aggrandizing piece of him running around showing that he's a hero. Of... Well, I'm sure it is. I never watched it, but. And then like... fudging numbers. He did that same number fudge thing. Like when he sits down with Trevor Noah, he does the thing of saying suicide rates are super high in Utah and they've gone up super. since 2008. It says 2008, the suicide rate of trans teens has quadrupled. And so like you do all this like number fudging. And you're, you're making it sound like, like trans or LGBT teens in Utah are dying by the tens of thousands, you know? No, I know. I, well, I got in an argument with my, it was with my wife and her sister after, after she had watched that, where they're talking about how, oh, the church is causing all these suicides. And I was just like, I don't know if I buy it. And they're like, what? Why not? They have a higher rate of suicide in teens. I was like, well, but the Bible belt doesn't. Yeah. Like Mormons, when they're mean, at least it's just like passive aggressively mean, like the Southern Baptists can be pretty intense. Yeah. And so it, I feel like they would have to have a similar suicide rate. And I, I haven't looked at the numbers, so I, I don't really know, but. I did look at numbers after that. That thing's been out for a couple of years, so they might be different now, but they, they used the 15 years from 2008 until when that thing came out to say that the numbers had quadrupled, which I don't even know like why you call that quadrupling as opposed to what, because before that they had a sure sign of eight LGBT suicides. And I think that's going back 50 years or something like that. And then after that, they had the 15 years after that, they had 32 quadruple. Really? And even oh. those 32 were supposedly, supposedly clear that it was for that reason. That's one of the deals is like using, using suicide as a bludgeon is such a bad, a bad metric to go about things because first off, in most cases, you don't actually know the whole entire truth of why the person was suicidal or not. Yeah. Uh, you don't get the final story or, or what, what the final incident or reason was, but beyond that too, is one of the very first things Emil Durkheim, the father of all sociology, the reason he became or created the field of sociology is he realized suicide goes up with affluence. Suicide goes up with free time. Suicide goes up with leisure. It's a first world problem. It's a first world problem. So, so there's going to be some sort of level, of like the more you coddle just inherently by the numbers, the more, the easier it gets for people. The trick about suicide has always been that that might bring about more suicides on the grand scale of stuff. Yeah. And so it's just a terrible metric to try to use to, to bludgeon people with and say that, Hey, yeah, our answers for, for this sorts of things. I mean, if you, if you're going to use that stuff about people mistreating people, it kind of goes flies in the face of Kenny because shouldn't, shouldn't blacks be the most suicidal people around for how much they get bullied and beat up and treated around for well, that's a lot of people, that's a lot of people point out whenever, whenever they say that trans suicide rates are so high because they're being mistreated. They always, a lot of anyone smart points out they have a higher suicide rate than Jews in concentration camps or than, than slaves. Yeah. It's well known that it's, that it's low, it's lower yeah. than, uh, than, than average. It's lower than Asians who are super affluent and all that sorts of stuff. And Asians are some of the highest, you know, Japanese are some of the highest, mm -hmm. the most affluent, the most, some of the, the area of the most, just, they don't even have much diversity to have to deal with in their nation that they're, you know, and the suicide, you, you just cannot go picking at that stat and thinking it means what you think it means. Yeah. But even beyond that. No, there's nothing statistically outstanding about the Utah thing. If you really break it down, like any sort of statistics, you can, you can pull the story out that you want to pull out. And, uh, 
they wanted to pull that thing out. Now to put on the other level, I'm sure once or twice or three or four or five times, some ex Mormon or post Mormon kid did have a super tough time with that and had committed suicide for that. I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. it's happened. It's just talking about it. Like it's the, the epidemic that it is. And then they have every year they have this love loud thing. He said, they're, here they're completely unwilling to acknowledge that like, okay, at, at least acknowledge to me that your agenda or, or like your movement would be bolstered if you interpreted it to be this way. And they're like, no, that's just the only interpretation you can have of it. Possibly. What else could you think? And now because you're tried to think of it in a different way. You're being some type of phobic. Off. Yeah. Some type of phobic. He said it was church sponsored. I don't think it was directly church sponsored, but there's something like the church office building sponsors it or something like that. He was just barely noticing that that was something that's happened. Cause there's been a lot of different little things that have happened in Utah, although I don't think I'm here, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of a uh, world economic forum stuff going on in Utah because of here's one of the like main port authority places where like a bunch of different railroads connect and that sort of stuff. And even in my home, I think it's actually one of the last uh, screenshots I have. My home school district is putting in anti-racist stuff and queer theory stuff. And, and, uh, it got noticed on Twitter. Let's see here. This is the worst inflation I've seen in my life. The worst inflation you've seen in your life so far. <laughs> of, uh, Biden, uh, it's going to get bad. It's already bad, but, uh, crap. I, I thought this was funny because, um, urban planners, our cities, the public help. Here comes a contemporary architect and just <laughs> shoots. <you. laughs> Uh, I've seen several different things posted lately, but there was uh, something, uh, that's probably one I have here too, but the uh, director of Amelie said, I'm not making a sequel to Amelie because Paris is hideous now. I can't make a film. <laughs> and and uh, that's one of the big things that Roger Scruton was always talking about and pushing about is that we used to make beautiful buildings and we used to worry about, you know, beauty in our, in our construction. Now it's just crap. But What would Howard Rourke say? Oh, Lori Lightfoot. She's pushing stuff out saying, dude, yeah. she is nuts. The mayor of Chicago <laughs> to my friends, in the LGBT community, the Supreme court is coming for us next. This moment has to be a call to arms. So that's, that's been one of the big things to me lately. We all know that the uh, Roe versus Wade stuff, a bunch of these other screenshots are going to be Roe v. Wade stuff. And I know that's been popping up a ton for you. I don't, I haven't heard a ton of talk about it in the ex Mormon community. It's kind of weird to me that they slightly sort of dodge it. Like I would have thought that John Lynn would be uh, all over it or. Yeah, no, he's kind of missing out, I guess. Um, that one's fun because th that could go back to the other thread we were looking at where it's like, we're not calling for violent insurrections, but if we were, it would be okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we just, we just had a conniption for a whole year and a half about the, 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 the main, the main line that Trump said that they tried to do the, the second impeachment or whatever on. You have to fight for your country. Yeah, that was the line. Yeah. And now Elizabeth Warren's already said it. I mean, everybody's already said the exact same line, like five different times. And then there's, they're encouraging the protests out in front of the, it, to me, there's some sort of level, like the, the January 6th people got out of control, the riots, the fiery, but peaceful riots got out of control. And then there's still a level, like, I believe in the, in the, that people have the right to even say stuff like let's fight like hell. I think Warren, I think Elizabeth Warren was fine saying we need to fight like hell. And I think Trump was fine saying we need to fight like hell. Yeah. And this one, it kind of straddles the line though. Yeah. <laughs> saying it's saying called call arms. Yeah. 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 And I have another post that might be in a couple little, we'll get to it where she gets called out for it. How do we get here? Ask the man who's too afraid to say no to anything because he might get fired, call the mean name online or lose annual party invitation. Oh, this was on Justin Trudeau took Melanie Jolly and, uh, Christian Freeland to see you two in the Ukraine on mother's day amidst the raging war that really happened. The you, you two went and performed in the Ukraine and Justin Trudeau flew people out to go see it. Thanks Bono. Animal farm pigs, <laughs> but I didn't get this. Maybe you could get it, but nuance Hope puts this up. Like it's something to advertise for a channel. I know this stuff is bouncing everywhere, but I, like I said, it was just the stuff that I screenshot. Mormons, you must simply stop being so cringe if you were to wish this world for the, wish to share this world with the rest of us. As an official Quora blogger of the church, I must tell you that I don't know what the Mormon church is. Do you mean the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? What is a Mormon? They're obviously being glib right there. Yeah. But James, when you're alone, does anyone miss you? Like, is that, is that a That's highlight just... reel? <laughs> no, it's, she's just, I don't know. 
I've seen her be funny a few times. Um, but like I, I got into an exchange with her on some stupid yeah, um, I remember, right? Mormon related. Easy, I was like, right? yeah, I just told, I was like, that's not a good argument. It, it was something about like <clears throat> some very, yeah, was it? it was some very un, uncharitable interpretation of, of a Mormon doctor. I was like, look, I'm not Mormon anymore, but like this question you have is very answerable. And we got into a back and forth and then she just kept talking about how she doesn't have any fucks to give. Like it was the most hilarious thing you could say. Like, and, and like it, her last tweet she sent to me was like, cause I told her, this is why I think it's fake. And then she responded, behold my field. It is barren for I have no fucks to plant or some, some shit like that. And I was like, okay, and it was fun while it lasted, buddy. Yeah. But that, that's just what that looks like to me. Cause I mean, it was kind of a, it's a cringy thing when Mormons get weird about the whole name thing. Good. Cause I just want to like, shut up. I, I don't know. Yeah. I think that's ridiculous too. It's, so it's, it's a cringy joke that the blogger made, but her response is just like, yeah, I don't think it's a great zinger, but it's, it sounds like she would be really good as one of those, uh, what was it? The top, the worst, whatever videos. Do you remember that? They, they had that where it'd show like the worst robbers or whatever. And then they had a bunch of sort of washed up comedians and Tanya Harding for some reason commenting on it. Yeah. No, but I remember those types of show. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I think she'd be like apt at something like that. <laughs> no, I remember that's kind of how Chelsea Handler got famous is just sitting around and doing those things. But no, Chelsea Handler was like, on that one. <laughs> no. Okay. This, I saw her here in Utah just the other day and like, I also think like if I suddenly asked that question to somebody who's pushing back on us on some sort of like trans issue or something like that, it would just be, <laughs> how dare you, uh, how dare you call into question their, that could, they might have a mentally ill situation where they are lonely and whatever. I mean, so, <laughs> if somebody said that to me, like if, if the Mormon blogger said that to me, I'd just be like, oh, cringe. <laughs> So I, I probably would have done a whole entire podcast on it and should have, but the, the, uh, under the banner of heaven came out and Jonathan says that he likes it. All right. I, I don't like it at all, but I'm going to watch it all. I think the overall story is interesting, but I, I think the way it's delivered is kind of weird. You, I haven't been able to bring myself to watch it. I just, it's so I have out me to care. So a couple people just in my band were watching it and they're, they're super not crazy into this stuff and, but they grew up in Utah and they're not super Mormon and they're not anti-Mormon or anything. And they thought the talking was weird and like, what the heck is this? And to me, that's kind of like a big sign that it's, it's not just, it's not just Mormons or whatever saying that this is coming off a bit overkill. Yeah. And, um, I looked up. I looked up some of the police officers who actually were involved in the situation to see if any of them seemed to me at all, like such a super, uh, Molly Mo type person. Cause my, my, uh, younger brother is a parole officer and, uh, I, so I know some people working around in that world, even if they're Mormon, if you're working in that world, you, you lose innocence pretty quick. Even in, even in 1980s Provo, it was not that rural mumba humba humba, you know, and, uh, <laughs> Um, you're at work and you're like, the Lord has blessed us with this day at work. Let us pray. Yeah. So Lindsay has a park was a consultant on it. And uh, some people have asked her about some of the history on it and she defended. And then this is her saying that they consulted a bunch of active members. And I, <laughs> I mean, you can get any sort of active member that you want nowadays, but I have, I, I don't really believe them that they got any sort of real true believing active member to put their, uh their uh, two cents into it. They probably have to kind of lie to them to even get them to do it. Because they, if they came and said, hey, we're going to, what do you think about this depiction that we did of your sacred temple ceremony that we're not supposed to depict? Well, there's oh, plenty oh, of kind active of. members too, who are, who are less act, less, less believers than I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the progmos, reservoirs. Yeah. They are just, they're just not Mormons. <laughs> James Cromwell glued his hand to, uh, Starbucks to save milk, vegan milk. That's real weird. I like that guy as an actor too, but uh, <laughs> this is a good question about Peter Bogosian. What's an example of a problem that's not systemic? <laughs> well, your not... problem can't be heard if, unless the problem is systemic, because we have yeah. systemic problems to deal with. 
why are you troubling us with these individual issues? So fat phobia is a problem. It cannot be my work is fat phobic against me. It's, <laughs> it has to be a systemic thing. It's the basic meme of commies then and commies now. <laughs> but <laughs> the, yeah, this is something going on with ESG, like uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. I don't know how to say his last name. With CEOs of Exxon, Chevron, and Shell decided to cut gas production prices, then spiked. We call that antitrust violation, but when BlackRock and Maguire pressure them to do it, it's celebrated as ESG. Just yesterday, they closed down more oil speculation. There's so much stuff to me that it just really does seem like they are aiming downwards. I, uh, they have to be. Like, I don't even, I do not believe Biden is that inept and stupid or whatever. Like, they, they have to be trying to tank something. They're, they, they have to be. Yeah. He's definitely not stupid. Yeah. yeah. I learned today that in 2007, 47% of professors in the humanities and social sciences in American universities openly identified as one of more of the Marx radicals, Marxists, or activists in 2007. I know this was true just at the University of Utah 15 years ago. Wow. So, and that, well, that's the same time frame. That's when I was there. And it's just was absolutely true in the humanities. It was already taken over. It's one of the things I actually did, did an hour. I don't know when he's going to put out or not. Cause we kind of got in the weeds with a quick Greg from quick this week. And that's one of the main things we talked about was just how the university of Utah was circa 2004 and five and how it was just already gone. But now it's gotten so far that even BYU is, 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 is as wild. It is. Just, yeah. His, his stuff on BYU is pretty great. Yeah. I think you sent this to me. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah. California trans unless they're Hannah Tubbs charged the first degree murder. I don't know if there's a, so tell me if this is transphobic. That is the most dude looking woman ever. Like, I don't <laughs> think there's, there's been a lot of dude looking women, but like, I don't think there's even the slight iota of a <laughs> shot of a chance of him trying in any way at all. No, no. It's, it's like in South Park. Did you ever see that Don't Be a Sissy episode? Where yeah, well, I've seen all the episodes, but remind me. It's the, it's the one where Cartman wants to go to the girl's bathroom to take a dump. So he just puts a bow in his hair. <laughs> That's what that makes me think of. Uh, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. Hannah. It makes me think of Hannah Mouncey, actually. The Australian handball player or whatever. The, his, the bat. Oh yeah. His like just enormous. Yeah. Long hair though. So long hair. That, yeah. that looks like the only transition that, that my question is if that one was like Leah, Leah Thomas, a lot of people probably don't know Leah Thomas isn't going to transition anything and also dates women. It's probably true of that person too, over in wherever you may call it, which yeah. is the same as a Riley Dennis, who used to be, Riley I haven't Dennis. seen a ton of Riley Dennis lately on uh, YouTube. Yeah, I think it went away. John DeLynn, strong evidence for me that the Mormon church isn't true. Mormon God called only men to be witnesses to the of Mormon. He's the creator of the universe, y'all. He could have called a woman or two, but zero, your thoughts. My thoughts is that is not evidence. But it's uh, not evidence. It's, it's, he used y'all in there. That made me laugh because it's just a random. That's like trying to be like, yeah, sisters. Like, <laughs> it's just like a random Jack Handy, deepity deep thought thing. Like, one of the things that drives me crazy is a kind of bad or boring art. That's the same thing that you went after Kara for on that, that, uh, on uh, Twitter is just bad and boring arguments that have been brought around forever, like, you know, even to take down Mormons or, or, or it's, well, and and it's also not evidence. Like even it just doesn't follow or whatever. Like mm. because that that the only way that would be evidence is if that well we know that God is like me, John DeLynn, and inclusive. Yeah, and he he would all, he would pick the an equal number of men and women, probably more women to make up for all the times that he didn't pick women. Um, yeah, there's, exactly. Um, there's because this is a trend I've noticed among a lot of the more woke ex Mormons. It's just sort of. You could tell it's retroactive. They, they like retroactively swap up the reasons that they left the church to, to be more like woke reasons. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. It used and to I, be. It's more of a suspicion no. than anything, but because like, yeah, I can't just look at this person's post history and be like, oh, let's see. Did you really leave for the LGBTQQIA plus? No, you left for history, but now history isn't enough it, that's i've seen a lot of people actually complain oh it wasn't enough to watch all of your trans brothers and sisters kill themselves because of the church it just had to be historical reasons 
Well, I think they do so well. Like they, they realize well enough, the ones who especially have the agenda to try to deconvert people, the, the pathos arguments work better than the logos ones ever did. I don't know with John Lynn, but these types of arguments, I think are so bleh that yeah. my 401k is crushed and I can't afford food or what does that say? Gas. Best economic recovery in history, Jack. <laughs> ice cream. Oh, I've seen so many of those lately. <laughs> Person who thinks it's ridiculous that this guy says he's Korean, but reverently accepts his claim that he's a gender fluid woman. Uh, that was a pretty interesting one to look at, but it's just kind of pinpoints, um, the, the ridiculous of the construct world and how we talk in the ex Mormon world so much about cognitive dissonance, Kara and John and John Larson, do you guys have cognitive dissonance anywhere? Is, is any of this stuff cause any cognitive dissonance in you? If I had like one of those, those Superman hotlines, like where the, where the president of the United States just picks it up and it's Superman, it would be to Vosh. And I would be like, Vosh, explain this to me. Like, well, the distinction would be that things are, things like uh, gender are more arbitrary and, and race is, shut up, Vosh. <laughs> I, I gotta stop channeling Vosh. I actually know like the academic argument for it, which isn't any better, but they, they try to use that concept of structural determinism. But the reason it's not any better is because that same structural determinism should be true of gender too. That you, you were treated your whole entire life as a certain gender. So that sort of structurally determined you, like you, yeah. you, you so you were already picking and choosing again with what your official academic description for it was. And he knows you've been following a bunch of people doing the protests. And then they also found this undercover documentarian with right wing people and they got jumped in Antifa who doesn't exist, but yeah. it's still. Did I, I'm going to be real sad when Andy No is assassinated. Yeah, it'll probably, it'll probably happen, unfortunately. And then Winston Marshall will say something about how I'm sad and he'll get kicked out of his next band too. Yeah. The dude from, uh, what's it called? Uh, Mumford and Sons. Yeah. I've been playing a banjo. I should apply for that job. And then I uh, get kicked <laughs> out the very next day. And just like, yeah, I think they're going to. I got the job and I, well, I will follow Andy knows who. Yeah, they'll, they'll Shane Gillis you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should go Shane Gillis, Mumford and Sons. That's a good <laughs> I got hired. I'm fired. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> oh man. I'd rather have questions that cannot be answered than answers that cannot be questioned for Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman has a lot of good quotes. U S government is literally responsible for these, uh, baby formula things, but that's just true of all the stuff that's taken. As we said, here it is. This is a Lori Lightfoot again. Somebody was challenging her <laughs> saying you're clear. You're clearly calling for violence. If we apply the logic you and others have applied before. That's from Sticks Hexahammer. Excuse me, insurrection is your <laughs> not our thing. <laughs> oh God. You literally tweeted a call to arms, Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then you said out this 149 Republicans voted to send 40 billion to aid for Ukraine, just the same. Like Red Wave's gonna save us, folks. <laughs> Red Wave's going to be terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it gets really wild. Yeah, yeah I'm afraid of the uh, actual homophobic, actual racist hellhole we'll, we'll live in when, when 4chan is in charge. Well, I mean, this, that, that was the trajectory of uh, Weimar Germany. Like, things went one, yep. one way real far, and then they rubber banded back real hard the other direction. Lifestyle brand leftists like AOC, Elon Omar, Sleeve, Cory Bush, etc., are always quick to rattle off the most incendiary rhetoric about various race and gender issues, but on the issue of U.S. military escalation, they're card-carrying members of the pro-war consensus. Just true. <laughs> this is one of the dumbest. This stuff oh, hurts God. my heart and hurts my brain. Stephen King, I stand with Nina Jankowitz. Oh, wow. Nina Jankowitz, the lady who. The czar of the Ministry of Truth. Yeah, called it the, the commissar, the commissar of who gets to decide what's true or not. Well, I'm, I have a video up there in the thread, but probably won't go back to it, but where she was talking about he, everything we've said in here, we'd already be shut down by her if she had it. Right? Yeah, Stephen King stands with her because, uh, likes ministries of truth. Five shots in two years is not a vaccination program. It's an IQ test. But <laughs> the hands me, the hand. Women dressed as handmaids in front of Amy Comey Barrett's home, oh, God. which it is illegal to go and do those types of protesting from the home of a judge, but it's not an insurrection folks. 
here's the thing I said. Emily's director says Paris is too ugly. <laughs> this, I don't know if I want to go into this all right now, but that Jackson Waxburn stuff, this is a whole other side rock uh, thing, but there's a, yeah, I won't even go into it now. There's that, I gotta do a whole podcast on that. Yeah. This guy too, he's a dude on TikTok. Like there's all this stuff where there's apologists or they're kind of going that way of the dark and light and it, like a little bit of using the postmodernism to argue for the apologetic stuff. But beyond that, like this guy's kind of more, there's that Petri guy and this guy in Jackson where they, they all get these highfalutin divinity school degrees. And then what they come and do, they come back and this guy more than anything kind of tries to turn Mormonism. He interprets almost all of Mormonism to actually be just the most mainstream Christianity that you could imagine. Right. It's like, they're all trying to say Mormons were always exactly the same about all Christians as far as grace goes, where Mormons yeah. were always the same as far as all Christians go, as far as the Trinity goes, like, it, it almost seems like they're doing this effort to try to blend Mormons into the, to the general acceptable consensus, big state Christianity. Sounds like they're just like, fighting gaslighting with gaslighting. Yeah, exactly. But uh, to me, there's a level of it that it is a bit of that dialectic. Like they're, we're trying to blend it into the state accepted Christianity with all of them. The state accepted, uh, w w that properly accepts all the DEI, uh, ESG approved church. And we're here to change it into that. I thought this was occupied Democrats. This just, <laughs> once upon a time, Democrats, or Chan posts. Once upon a time in the fifties, a family could own a home, a car and send the kids to college all on one income. Like it, that's good. The lack of self-awareness just hurts my brain so much. <laughs> there has been one group of people. It's a big group. It's half, kind of half the country, a third of it, who've been working against that. And it's you, <laughs> you've been, you guys have been the ones to undo that. All of your that politics, all of your votes combined made that happen. Meme, the meme of the dude who puts the stick in his own bike spokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. What do you call it? This one is just a, it was just showing the, uh, thing that that girl who, uh, talked to the kids in the schools. I mean, it, it actually shows like in the, uh, the rules of the, the policies of the schools in Lehigh, Utah, that you're not allowed to talk to kids like that. And I thought it was one of the interesting things to talk about. Everybody says, oh, you can't bring up the, your gender identity or whatever. And it is absolutely true that I did not know the first names of my elementary school teachers. I know. And loved them. I, mean, I got along with them great. It was crazy. I don't know if any of them were married. Some of them might have even been lesbians for all I know. They, they kind of looked like it, if I think about it. I didn't know anything about them and I didn't need to know it. Yes. What, <laughs> remember what they took from you. The ability to tell you your elementary kids who you bang. Yeah. <laughs> Connery didn't kill itself. Yeah. There's just, there's just such a truth that I don't, I honestly don't, I mean, there's like all the great reset stuff and you know, James Lindsay gets into it and all those ideas and all the things that are just so upside down and purposeful. And then people saying that we're getting away from whatever oil backed money and really are reset and all that stuff, but whatever it is, whatever isn't happening, whatever galaxy brain ideas are going on. I just don't think it's deniable that right now there is a purposeful endeavor to, to tank what our economy is and has been. And mm -hmm. who, what, where, and why I'm at, I, I only have hunches, but I just think it's undeniable. <laughs> yeah. These is undeniable that they're trying to take it. And, and it's one of those concepts. It's, it's what's made me over the past four or five years, finally, ultimately embrace the word. I don't even know why I ever had a problem with it, but like it's some sort of level of libertarian or, or because I cannot imagine a government entity or our government entities putting any money sent to it toward good use. They, they will not do anything but go corrupt with it. Like the, the sending money to a centralized organizing thing corrupts. I think it infinitely corrupts and I don't think there's a way out of it corrupting. Yeah. Well, there's, uh, <laughs> I got, I've been following a bunch of progressive Mormons on Twitter, which is hell, but they, one of them was saying something about how Mormonism needs to lose its tax exempt status. Yeah. And that was like the version of me who immediately left the church would have been like, yeah, screw them, you know, but, but then like very shortly after I was like, well, I, I think I hate the government way more. And, and so I, that was my reply. I was like, look, the 
Mormon Church is going to do way, way, way more good with this money than the yeah. government would. I I agree, and I had that same trajectory at one point in time. I thought it should too, but I'm I'm at a point where sending any money to the government, I think, is just sending. Money. I honestly think it's sending money to people who aim down. I honestly, yeah. you know, inflation isn't happening. Inflation isn't te is temporary. Inflation is good. It's your patriotic duty to go. <laughs> Dude, I remember seeing um, some articles that were like, "Why inflation is actually a good thing." <laughs> <laughs> There, oh, there it is. There's a bunch of them. They say you'll get the bigger, you'll get big raises for the first time in years. When it, if you get a 3% raise and there's 20% inflation that's going to get up to, <laughs> that's not a raise, you know, but I mean, it's choking and it's, it's looking spooky. Te and all this is what I was just saying. Teachers, when I was a kid, I hope everyone had a good recess. It's time for math. Whiteness is now privilege. It's privilege. Now who's ready to hear about my section? <laughs> I do think that that's not as common. Like, I, I bet you it's not very common. It's not like every other teacher or something like that. Yeah. But different accounts all over Twitter and everything have shown enough of them to say that, hey, there's some teachers that need to get this reeled the hell in. Yeah. But once again, I, sending money to government at all, even for government schools, is uh, they, even then, like, I, I, I don't think. Any, I don't think government runs anything well anymore. I know they've been doing a bang up job with education for decades now. Oh yeah. Whole oh, other thing. Mm -hmm. Right about now would be a good time to finally talk about toxic femininity. <laughs> Heather Hang did a good article on toxic, toxic femininity. I think she did a sub stack on it. Like, so if toxic masculinity is real fine, but then let's talk about toxic femininity because it has to be real too. Yeah. And I mean, it stands to reason. Yeah, I could do a whole podcast on the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing too. Cause I mean, I've been watching. I've been watching Rakita Law cover it. Oh, dude, I watched him during the Kyle Rittenhouse thing. I I watched that artistically. <laughs> this one. Yeah, this one, this one, I've been not artistically but close. I mean, I've been I probably caught eighty percent of it when when he's been covering it. It's wild stuff, man. Yeah, Rakita's a cool guy. Yeah, there it is under the banner of Damon. Oy, 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 oy. Wesleyan, I've noticed that there are always, this is the same thing as the other stuff. There are always people who lag behind clinging to it's not happening long after the signal has gone to pivot to it's good. <laughs> That's one, of the, <laughs> one of the things too is that there's the, all the apologists, they don't realize that the, there's, it gets to a point and people start saying, like, yeah, there's critical race theory, but it's a good thing. And they didn't catch the memo. So they're still, still, uh, it's not happening. It's just, it's just history. So the safe thing to do is like, try to say them both at the same time. Yeah, it certainly is an unfathom, uncomfortable position, but certainly is an absurd one about there. Oh, this one's, this one's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love no, you have to look at the screen for that one. I just won't even read that one. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is one I probably, uh, I shouldn't show the name, but, um, yeah, this is a lady who's a look on a lefty on mine, but she said, Hey, teenagers. Pay close attention to the books people try to ban, then make a beeline to read those books you can. Find out for yourself. I wonder if this thing got like, it gets flagged for pornography. I know some people have gotten flagged for pornography. This, there might already be a problem with this, with this very stream, just for that little bit of it that showed that book. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go find that book and read that book. Please do. Please do like follow through with this lady. I know you, I know you're a good lady. Follow through with it. I know that you won't like that. That's <laughs> not Ulysses and catch 22 there. It's getting bad. <laughs> Portland schools reinstate the mass. So this is another one of those books that she should go read. Book for four year olds on display. Jesse Smith library, Burville, Rhode Island. They kiss each other all over their bodies, even on the bum and between the legs, Sabrina's vagina becomes moist and warm and Marco, like, I actually, I'm not like a, like a, at all a person who has problems or struggles with getting grossed out or, or, you know, seeing almost pornographic level movies or, or that, that sort of stuff, you know, like R, super R rated, whatever, but this stuff just makes you want to puke. It makes yeah, you want to puke weird. that they're trying to show this stuff to kids and putting in books and, and, you know, <laughs> that, yeah, that one makes you uncomfortable because like it uses the word bum 
And you think the context sure. of the word bum, you only ever use that word when you're talking to like very little kids. Well, it says this for ages four to eight and they're for sure they're doing it. And these books are there. And then it's the, the exact same thing we've shown four or five times. There's always, it's not happening. It's not happening. It's not happening. Oh, okay. It's good. And a lot of people don't, who are still saying it's not happening, haven't gotten the message yet that they've already moved on to it's good. They are these books that are defending the, the lady. Oh, I have a screenshot of that somewhere too. The, the librarian from the New York school district who's recommending the gender queer book that showed those images of these types of things. And some of them were in that book are images of what's like an above age person with an underage person. Major truck stop chain loves and pilot warning about imminent diesel shortages, which is another manufactured shortage. Oh, this one was funny. I even tried it myself. Try it. See what happened. Google search results for a happy white woman and see what the image is you get out of Yeah, same one. <laughs> I love those when it, it's a Google. They're so well, It's only women in interracial relationships and some of them are like angry. That's just a black woman. <laughs> <laughs> they're angry. You, you try to Google happy white. And then the other, they're angry. I think the angry is almost funnier than other stuff. Uh, well, some but, of them are just like black women. Which is an honor. <laughs> <laughs> We're in such a freaking upside down nowhere place. <laughs> it, like it's how is it not just stop photos of a happy white woman? <laughs> why why did they buy <laughs> it? is a Truman show level nonsense, man. <laughs> <laughs> the mystery hepatitis found in Tennessee children. So the Pfizer papers came out these last week. Yeah. And people are reading, looking at it, and it there's stuff in there that shouldn't be stuff that the whole world are discussing, no matter how credulous or incredulous you are about this. And it's ridiculous in the world that you're not allowed to talk about. Oh, it's another one of those. I already did that. This is another one that I noticed. We understand why people talk about CGG, CGG subsequence now, because it ties SARS COVID to a lab leak. But why was there a peak of those searches in the summer of 2019? With the people searching for that in the summer of 2019, he had a graph that you can see that it, it peaked and people were searching for it in the months before, but maybe conspiracy theory stuff, who knows? Today I tested positive for COVID. I'm grateful to have had four vaccines and the protection has given me, I'm at home resting fine. And that's, that's a me. It, that... it misses the part where they then blame the unvaccinated. On... <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's a real, like, you can see this exact post on 500 different tweets because yeah. of the upside down world again. I, I saw this one. This woman was, she was one of the few that actually got myocarditis and it was really? directly to the vaccine. And she was like, I'm still glad I got the vaccine. <laughs> oh. It's such stupid times. Look at this. The uh, Washington Post got Pulitzer Prizes in public service for their account of the attack on the U.S. Capitol. <laughs> oh, as well they should. <laughs> should have got a Grammy, maybe, not a Pulitzer Prize. Target gives out new products that include things like binders and packing underwear and bras. Cause, uh, and they're even like, it's not even LGBT month till, till next month. I think it's funny because like the last couple of years, like John DeLynn's gotten offended by something during June. And... It's become like so sacred, like religiously sacred to him. He'll, he'll always do something say, they dare do this and say this to LGBTQ month. As if they even like hold any of this stuff back and wait for the month at all anyway. But they, then it's, it's like every, they have two months now. Yeah. And then they have October too. I can kill my, my children only for <laughs> the States. This is literally like the TV show, the hand host. To, you know. The hand host. <laughs> you would notice that. I... If Christian evangelical law is going to force women to give birth, the full cost of the child should be paid for by taxing the churches. We were just talking about that. The if part we didn't talk about. It. Forcing women to give birth. I, I hate that argument so much. I, I've been in, like, I just got an argument with a couple people over, like, because they, they were saying that it, they're basically trying to say the only reason you could possibly be I guess abortion is religious. And I was like, no, most, even the most religious people I talk to don't cite their religion as the reason that they're against abortion. They just say, I think it's a person and I think you're killing a person and I think you shouldn't be allowed to kill people. And 
I don't think they, that's so hard, even for pro choicers who are fully pro choice. Why, well, you would think you would want to feel men at least in your own head. Why is man. it hard for you to get that? That's what they believe. That's how they think. Like you, I, I've said, I had that even on some of those ex-Mormon sites. I said, do you understand that they, they feel that it is killing a person. It's not because they want to control a woman's body or something like that. Like they believe that is what they believe. How do you not accept that that's what they believe? No, it's not that it's. It's that they want to control a woman's body. <laughs> did you see Vosh's rant on this the other day? Oh, uh, well, probably, it was, maybe. It, it was on Sitch and Adam, one of their clips that was pretty good, where he, he basically just says that the only reason conservatives are against abortion is because they want to control a woman's body. It's nothing to do with saving the baby or whatever. They don't think That's it's a pretty a old trope. They almost always... It's, it's an old trope, but he did... Uh, he had watched it. He makes it like he, religious. He makes it... Sounds like a pastor. He makes it especially vouchy. He makes it especially vouchy. He would have been a good pastor, like like a, a, a televangelist, if he were born in the seventies or something like that. Progressive dust off my body, my choice sign she put in storage at the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> we're all gonna make it. Official sources. This is a false immediately. <laughs> and the more Nina Jinkowitz and the Michael Malice replies, of course you do. You're I stand with Nina Jacobus, Stephen King. Of course you do. Your entire career is spent writing about monsters. <laughs> this is polarization in, in uh, the trust of the science, but I don't think it's necessarily science that they distrust. It's distrust in the claims of people saying that they are the science. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Supreme Court's 1973 NPR. Since the Supreme Court's 1973 Roe vs. Wade decision, a number of not quite right claims have lingered about abortion. Here are seven claims. First claim, there's a big support for ending Roe in America. It's, it's, it's such, it's such goofy stuff because the truth of the matter is, is that there was never huge re support for Roe. They, there's a reason it didn't get passed the proper way through the Senate and all that stuff and had to be put, you know, forced through, through the yeah. Supreme court. And it's just, it's obviously not true. Even right now, if there's great, big, huge support for it, pass, pass a national law, you stupid. And that already failed. They did try to do one, but there, there's even a level that they probably purposely tried to make it fail because they added it and they made it all way more extreme right off the bat. They didn't just, they didn't even just try to reinstate Roe with the, what the law they tried to pass. They, they of course made it extra and, uh. Claims after I saw a whole other graph on this claims that after row abortion skyrocketed that is absolutely true that it did and that's one of those fake fact checks where they say oh but it evened out over time so that's mostly misleading <laughs> so, but you can see on the graph that it obviously did spike after row passed and it, it turns out when we started letting people do this thing we didn't previously let them do they started doing it more yeah it's so that the claims that abortion is dangerous and the claims that only people getting abortions are straight cisgender women. <laughs> like, what is that even? Like, what are you, exactly. I, why did you even go there? Yeah. But uh, nobody's sitting there saying, nobody's, who's even saying that? But there was also another big fact check that most of the abortions are being had by highly uh, again it's kind of that Durkheim thing it's highly affluent money making most of the abortions are that it's not the uh poor little tiny tim orphan that, that they uh, keep trying to make um this is a guy who came out he was a mercenary over in the ukraine came back saying i don't think it's going so great in the ukraine like you guys think it is but uh a few years ago, I was a registered Democrat. Now I'm an anti-vax conspiracy theorist, AKA as a Nazi, the hometown I escaped. Life comes at you fast, man. Oh uh, yeah. I follow her. <laughs> what is she ex Mormon? I'm not sure. Like she, she sounds Mormon when, when I hear her talk, I, but she, her name is little apostate. So maybe she's just, you know, like me or you <laughs> this is another feminist argument against the the trans stuff uh turf argument when men say they want to be called women they're listened to when women say we want to be called women we're told we're birthing bodies period havers vulva owners bleeders turfs and bigots this is a pretty good argument in there <laughs> this is something i saw in the poker world that they're all talking about there's a problem of a gender pay gap in the poker world <laughs> oh god <laughs>
<laughs> and if there's anything in this world that's more just like it, you get how the cards fell for you. I know. Then the, okay, we, we, <laughs> we uh, sent this one a while back. JK Rowling. You can always tell a real woman by the pretty rainbow ways that she draws <laughs> knives. <laughs> Turfs the, weaponize the patriarchy against trans femmes by telling them what women should be. The trans activist threats um, on turfs is just like uniquely disgusting. Like the, and they're not even mean to me because I'm not even a turf. I'm not like a. I'm not a feminist. They kind of lost me after the second wave. But like I'm just the the tan part of that. I'm not like trans exclusionary. I just I don't agree with your gender ideology. So some, for some reason, they're more angry at the ones that get at least half of it right than <laughs> they are at me who gets it all wrong. Okay, they say disgusting things about them. Like, I'm going to skin you alive, rape you. and I, It's but, unreal. Yeah. And the stuff they said to J.K. Rowling is unreal. I mean, oh, it's, yeah. just, it's so weird, J.K. I mean, enough people have made the point that J.K. Rowling, who should be square in the camp of not even center left, just well in the left. and. Now she's a turf, right wing turf. Uh, this is more stuff on Bill Gates, galaxy brain ideas. And it shows that all these different programs are, you know, Rob Henderson looked in, into it. And most of those degree programs are pretty big failures. Let's see here, Superman. Somebody wants to make liberation Superman. Uh, Glenn Greenwald pointing out that all the disinformation, the disinformation lady says that it's only been liberal, mostly liberal voices and black LGBT voices that have been silenced on, <laughs> on Twitter. I don't, I don't trust those people that say that. Like I was talking to the, the one lefty dude at work the other day who was trying to tell us that like, it's like, oh, you guys are crazy because all the, all the people, these far right assholes think that, that there's a liberal bias to the mainstream media or whatever. It's like, no, you have to be lying right now. I don't, you have to be lying if you don't yeah, know that there's a left wing bias. Well, this it's case, CNN. as soon as the Roe v. Wade thing passed, because we know that there's a, just out of luck for how many different Supreme Court justices have died under the four years of Trump and Trump snuck in, that they have a bit of a majority of right wingers in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. But some guy sent to me right the very next day. Whoa, how's your leftist uh, Maoist revolution coming now that Roe v. Wade turned over? I'm like, wait, 10 seconds. I mean, beyond that, it's, it's outrageous that this thing even got leaked. Can you even believe that? And now there's going to be all sorts of, uh, of political pressure and insurrections to fight against it. I said, this is going to be the immediate reaction and the immediate things that they, they weaponize it to put it right back into it. I heard somebody say, and I think it's kind of true that when the right gets power, they immediately exercise the power. When the left gets power, they use that power to get more power. They're playing chess, you know, rather than checkers, you know, and, uh, this is it. My four step plan Pass the Senate rule by majority to vote, to get rid of the filibuster, pass HR 3755, the women's health protection act of 2021 to protect medical services, including abortion and Roe versus Wade, pass the 13 justices act, appoint four new justices. This, this very stuff was the very the sorts of things. And Bernie Sanders repeated almost something exactly similar. So did. Elizabeth Warren. I know that's kind of far to the left wing, but I don't think it's so far out of bounds that they might not start mainstreaming it. They're going to be careful coming up to elections to, to mainstream it, but then coming after elections, they might try to go full bore with this source of stuff. But those exact suggestions right there were things that James Lindsay said were the reasons why he was voting for Trump because he saw this other side of being a machine moving towards trying to push more and more commissar level care over the pushing for justice is pushing for killing filibusters and all that sorts of stuff. He said, they're the ones trying to topple the system. They're the ones trying to undo what, what the system is. And people told me he was crazy for it and that he's crazy to think that they'd want it or even say that stuff out loud. And then now of course the Roe v. Wade thing made it so we're, we can say it out loud. We can just yeah. well, bark it. It, it makes it to where it's that whole thing we we're talking about how my enemies are ontologically evil. So it justifies doing anything to them. That yeah. I, th I think the left wing thinks that they'll always be in power. I, I think they really think that. Like, that's why Ruth Bader Ginsburg didn't just retire. I think she just always thought there would be a left wing president. And now we got them trying to get rid of the filibuster, which in a few years, when they're not in power, they're going to want that back. Oh, yeah, for sure. But they'll do something as crazy as that. Who knows if they will pull it off or not. But they're now saying the thing out loud that when James Lindsay said, I think they'll try to do this. When he said he was voting for Trump, 
a couple years, a year and a half ago. Then all these uh, very smart people said, you're crazy for thinking they said that. Well, just, just pushing this thing through made it so now they can all say it out loud. Now they all just. Uh, when you listen to enough James Lindsay, you, you understand how insane the world has to be to get him to vote for Trump. Oh yeah, totally. I, know, but, I didn't, I didn't vote for anyone ever until 2020. I actually ended up voting for Trump and I didn't, I don't like him. But Kamala Harris released that thing like a couple of days before. I wasn't going to vote at all, but she released that thing on some video on equity. And I was like, okay, this is evil. I have oh, I remember it. that video. Yeah. That's I voted against the machine. No, I don't, like, I don't know how else to say it. It's like, I'm just avoiding against whatever the hell this machine is. And, uh, this is them starting to push stuff of uh, trying to make different states. This is more pushing towards civil war, divorce type stuff. Mm -hmm. I recognize it's impossible to move the conference on such short notice, but women simply cannot be expected to travel to the state where they can't receive a certain treatment. It's like going to some conference for three days because you don't have access to abortion in some sort of, but that's going to be all this stuff. <laughs> if it does pass through and it does stay how it is, there's going to be pressure on any type pressure on corporations, just like they did around all-star games and baseball and all that sorts of stuff that we can't go to that state because that state has the wrong abortion laws. There's going to, that stuff's just going to grow and grow and grow. Oh yeah. And they tried doing that with Georgia and we're not going to film anything in Georgia. Yeah. I like this meme. Be the losing side of a war. Supporters today weren't alive when it happened and have no memory of it. Believes in a lost cause that's never going to happen. Ignores or downplays historical atrocities. Our guys were the real heroes. Be your average communist in 2022. The picture's unrelated. I love those pick unrelated. <laughs> I would know when it's going to happen. And I'm excited for it. I'm like, oh, there's going to be a pick unrelated thing. Yeah, that's the Confederate flag. You probably got to get rock and let's zip through them. Huff Rider tries to hire a sex worker and, and complains that the sex, no sex worker would take them because they're in China. Um, <laughs> the LSAT, they're getting rid of the LSATs because it's, it's bad for DEI, they're getting rid of, well, they're saying all testers are racist. They're getting any sort of SAT test and all that sort of stuff. That's what that screenshot is. Oh, yeah. Implicit bias stuff is coming back. Kenny's just talked about it and they're trying to test and make more tests for implicit bias. The thing again, even though the science behind the implicit bias testing is horse doo-doo. Kenny Shoe is great. Yeah, he is. Cocoon like pods in California. <laughs> Cambridge scraps their finals because finals are racist in England where there's all sorts of race issues. Uh, this is 2022. Let's be honest. Fred Savage could have been fired for double dipping a corn chip. Fred Savage <laughs> got fired because of a sex, some sort of a, not some harassment claim. Bill Murray just got fired for some sort of, so uh, there was some level I was saying the Johnny Depp thing is going to kind of change the me too stuff. And there's already been four or five things just in this past couple of weeks of, of people getting fired for who knows how plain or, or the, so I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessarily undoing everything. The worst of the hysteria of me too is over, but it's still there. Oh, Chomsky, Chomsky came out and uh, people have been talking about it. Chomsky, the anarchist is in full support of the super state being any does simple Chomsky, support of Does the, he still pretend to be an anarchist? I think he still claims it, but I don't know how on earth he can try to pretend to be in any way, shape, or form. He is just 100% behind all the concepts of the big, fat, dumb government controlling everything. <laughs> President's view is there's a lot of passion. That's about, that's the White House on the, <laughs> the people's support. The I have a lot of, of, I have a lot of sympathy for Kavanaugh. <laughs> Cryptocurrencies took a kick in, tick, took a kick in the dick and all these uh, countries in the IMF and ESG places are trying to take a dump on it. Oh, this is one that you and I shared is that, uh, oh, maybe it's not the one I thought it was. Frankly, I had thought that the time Roe was decided there was a concern about population growth and I don't, I don't even know why that. Oh, that's Justice Ginsburg. Oh, Justice Ginsburg yeah. was, uh, was actually not down with Roe v. Wade, thought it was a bad support. Well, this is something. Legislating from the bench. Yeah. And this is one of the vaccine that spreads the technology. <laughs> like you only have to vaccinate <laughs> people in the, and that's one of the, some more of their galaxy brain ideas they got coming down the pike for us. This is some other stuff to look at for conservatives that all the way down the line. And I have another thing up there that kind of talks about the history of neocons and that neocons actually come from Trotsky, Trotskyites and neocons have always been actually probably pretty 
big government Marxist type douche canoes, but people didn't realize like Barry Goldwater, his wife was one of the founding members of Planned Parenthood. The Bushes were all big onto it too. And it's like, yeah, the, the red wave. This is one that, that I shared with you is that uh, this one. one of these things, magazines were complaining that the new Northman movie is called Northman. Yeah. The Northman. Uh, Skarsgård's love interest played by Anya Taylor-Joy could be the far right male's dream woman, a beautiful fair haired, loyal to her man and committed to bearing his offspring. I love oh. that one. Because it's like these far right assholes, all they want, but they want, they want the, their woman to be beautiful. And they also they're, want their woman to be loyal to them. And they also want to have kids with the woman. The hell? Far right. You oppressive asshole. I can't believe it. Men can't have an opinion on abortion. Men can't have babies. Got to pick, <laughs> pick the thing. That's my favorite thing to do is I'll get in arguments with people on abortion. They'll be like, no uterus, no opinion. And I'll say, I have a uterus. And they'll say, shit. Yeah. So this is my high school. This is my school district. Oh no, they're not even a huge one. It was brought up on James Lindsay's, uh, Twitter thread of implicit racial bias and you determine your identity yet. And in my, it's, it's in my home school district. I, in fact, on the offensive line. Right next to me on the offensive line in high school, that guy is the principal of one of the junior highs right now. So, I mean, maybe I could ring him up and say, what the hell are you guys doing? But I don't know if he's there or not anymore, but I, I should, uh, message him. But I mean, I'm pretty sure he's somewhat connected with that world. I wonder what under it's going on there. Andy no pointing out some more protesters doing insurrection on the slippery slope. That is, uh... <laughs> there, there was no slippery slope. Remember that time a child billionaire trafficking ring was busted, but then no one was named other than one woman. And then we <laughs> televised this one. <laughs> what was their rationale for not televising the Gisling Maxwell? They said that some of the stuff was just too sensitive for the public to hear because it was difficult stuff. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just found out that there was a pedophile island. Of yeah. course you get like, look, we'll, we'll stomach the disgusting stuff. Put viewer discretion as advised before you televise it. We'll call it good. Glenn Greenwell pointing out that Tesla is covering, uh, that, that Elon Musk is right wing, even though cause Tesla covers for people to travel for their abortions and donates to the ACLU and, uh, voted for Obama, but he's right wing now. Uh, local distance pointing out that the, all these different people all over the internet were saying that men should be ready or like show money or show, like put some down payment if they want to have sex with any woman, which is bride price. So stuff has that weird horse thing where it comes back all the way around to being like conservative goofery. Well, they keep saying they're going to go on sex strikes. <laughs> like if you, oh, if you're not going to let us, you know, have abortions, we're not going to have illicit sex with strangers. And we're like, okay. <laughs> All right, it's it's four thirty. Should we rapid fire? Sure. Washington Post says, "Don't worry about this information board." Jonathan Haidt says, "Democracy is so screwed." James Lindsay got kicked off of Instagram for posting a quote by Benito Mussolini: "The state reserves the right to be the sole interpreter of the needs of society." He got kicked off of Instagram for posting that. More anti planning riots about Roe versus Wade. Afghanistan in the middle of everything made passed a decree requiring women to dress up like like complete tuscan raiders overall mentions of white privilege create internet discussions that are less constructive more polarized and less supportive and racially progressive policies which is point it's not this is a good <laughs> what the different planets look like from space um uh, agrees with the media university corporations the hollywood thinks he's part of the resistance <laughs> um, this is more stuff from the Mao, Maoist China that they got, made sure they got rid of all objective testing too, but we're not turning Maoist at all. So we totally are. If you're wondering about how far we've come as a nation, look no farther than who decides whether you're suffering from mental. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who doesn't favor a censorship regime run by rent seeking midwits is not nuanced. <laughs> Let's see here. Why did Elon Musk buy Twitter when he could have just bought a two bedroom house built in 1919 in Salt Lake City, Utah for the same price? Yup. Uh, there's, there are the prices nowadays. They're not a hundred percent effective. So why bother with the condom and then I suppose the girl cheering at the face masks. 
Uh, if you find yourself struggling to explain perfectly obvious things to people who surely understood them a few short years ago, it's because you're up against sophistry. Yeah, Brett, Weinstein. Brett Weinstein. She will be the first black LGBT house, white house press secretary, which will, I believe maybe she's qualified. Maybe she's all that stuff, but that's such an obvious way of using the DEI stuff as a shield, which uh, is John DeLynn should take a note from Jen Saki and passing the mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need to do that or you're not okay. But um, there's, there's such a level of that, that, that they, they know that they're shielding stuff and there's, you know, Derek Bell always talked about interest conversions that these, that the white liberal is you know, almost kind of in a Malcolm way is only just going to use you and use what your identity is. And if that's not, cause like, I don't like Derek Bell. I think Derek Bell was over the top cause he thinks everything's always the only interest conversions, but this is interest conversions. Like Derek Bell's <laughs> right about this. You are only being used as a shield. The Disney degree, which our meritocracy is collapsing is becoming plainly evident. Harvard is getting rid of basic T's. High schools are getting rid of APs. Corporations are indulging in DI. In 20 years, pipelines won't work. Water won't run. Buildings will collapse from Kenny Zhu, who is hardcore on the meritocracy stuff in schools. He's the one suing Harvard about their Asian discrimination. The, uh, inconvenient minority. I love that phrase. Douglas Murray's been saying this a whole lot lately. Everybody's been going because uh, Karl Marx was an obvious racist, said terrible things about black people and Jews. Um, Y'all know that Karl Marx was an upper class white, says hey, Western male thinker from the colonial area, right? <laughs> Wilfred uh, Riley's so cheeky all the time. Yeah. Totalitarian phenomenon is not to be understood without making allowance for the thesis that some important part of every society consists of people who actively want the tyranny, either to exercise it themselves or much more mysteriously to submit to it. I think that goes right along too. Like people are, there's, there's people in these big government and these big centralized situations who are generally aiming down. They're generally wanting to disrupt the system by having it blow up on itself. Alejandro from the, uh, um, Lobsters, imagine spending your whole life in a sex and murder cult that is about as sexual as leave it to beaver in which you neither get to do murders nor be ritually murdered. Just absolute bullshit. And at this point I'm shopping for a new cult. <laughs> <laughs> there is some truth to that. It's like you're in a cult and you never got any of the fun parts of it. I mean, like if it, if Mormonism was the cult. Yeah, there was a little part of me that like, when they told, when the people outside the church would tell me that the temple had sex rituals. I was a depraved kid thinking like, well, okay, maybe they're oh, guys. Right. It's kind of hot. <laughs> yeah, it is. That is true. Like, why didn't we get to do any of the fun parts of a cold if it's a cold? <laughs> but, uh, ships waiting to dock in China because insane COVID strategy. And that's part of our chain that problem is going on. We must stop this information from Bill Gates. That's Bill Gates telling us we must stop this information. And that's the Murray Utah one. I think we're down close to the very end here. Uh, fascinating 1966 article in the Atlantic about post-revolutionary Russia. When the Bolshevik came into power in 1970, they regarded the family like every other bourgeois institution with fierce hatred set out with a will to destroy it. And there is some sort of level of things. Lindsay's been pointing out, I've been pointing out, and I think that we are in some sort of a cultural revolution where there is a communist Marxistic idea, a Marcuse type idea to change our society into that. There's a level of aiming down, disintegrating the family, do the Gramscian thing that if you really think that they really want to usher in their new, even genetic person who's able to handle the new way, the great reset of doing things, the way we got to do it is we got to dissect and destroy and eliminate all the old ways, all the traditional ways of the four olds as Mal, as Mal called it. And, and as part Let's of Let's unpack the, that sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> down in the destruction and all that stuff. And, uh, I don't know what else to say other than, uh, this has just been another couple of weeks. This is only like a fourth of the stuff that I took pictures of just trying to, to cover it of the crap that's happening and just trying to do a roundup. I think if I did a longer, I'd want to do a longer podcast on under the banner of heaven. I'd want to do a longer one on the depth thing and the toxic femininity. I'd want to do a longer one on, but it, there just hasn't been any time. And so this is like a quick rundown of, of some of the stuff going on. And I still feel like there's like 50 other things, uh, happening. There's and, a million things happening. And it's impossible to keep up with all of them. And then, then we're on top of it, busy and all that sort of stuff. You got something coming out? Um, Is your channel just named under your name. No, uh, it's just, it's Saint of the Pyre. Saint of the Pyre. That's from, uh, that's from, uh, Anthem. Which book? 
Anthem. That's right. I need to, I need to read that book. I've never. It's just, it's completely about individualism. It's not really Rand's philosophy or anything. I know of Rand and the Red Rand. I know all of like her life and I know of what each book is about, but that is the one area that I've never actually read a Rand book all the way through. Mm, I, I've read. I like the Fountainhead. I like Atlas Shrugged and I really like Anthem. Anthem's pretty short. The other two are very long. That's what I've heard. I, I've seen like a clip of like one of the long uh, speeches from one of them, like, like a famous speech. I need yeah. to read it. I need to get into it, but I, I don't know. I think there's going to be. There's trouble ahead and stuff's going to get turned into crap. But as Rand said, and everybody said, everybody knows reality always bats last. My only worry is like what happens in the in between. Yeah. I've been people... pretty busy with uh, my, my kid. We got a birthday party for my kid tomorrow. Oh. My wife took him to the store uh, to pick out his own cake and he right. picked out a pink cake uh -oh. with, and he wanted purple icing for it. And he also got pink ice cream that he picked out himself. Have you, have you gotten a surgeon yet? No, we're going to have, we're going to have to like start talking about hormone blockage, obviously. So it reminds what, me when I was his age, I asked for an easy bake oven for thing or for, I'm just glad my parents didn't, you know. So uh, if my like parent, that. my parents never watched it, but they could verify it. You want to know what my favorite icing color is? Pink. You know, always no. was, I thought, I thought it tasted the best. And when I was a kid, I asked my parents for, we had this famous picture because I asked them for pink frosting because I ate it somewhere and I liked it. And they went and got me some sort of red cake. Oh, they, they thought I wasn't being serious about the pink. And do you remember, I don't know if you ever tried, I think they got better at it, but maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, red food coloring made stuff taste like balls. I, I don't really? think it ever tastes like, oh, Never. red food coloring was so bad in, in like the eighties and nineties. Like you could, you could not make it work. It was terrible. And that was the worst cake that we ever had. And it was because I asked for a pink frosting cake, but it's cause it's good. Your son knows what's up. No, how, how easy they were. Unfortunately, they're bigots and uh, <laughs> they didn't let you transition. Yeah. Your true self. And they didn't just make we could have been having a very different conversation right we're now. talking pretty young and i'm pretty sure what happened was at some other kid's party i had some yellow cake with pink frosting and thought it was very very good <laughs> and that's all i was thinking about you know yes. but uh but luckily they didn't chop off my manhood mm. just took toxic femininity later to do that so, uh, <laughs> well kidding. that does it that's what the west wants from you <laughs> we will we will uh Unsent, decenter ourselves and deconstruct ourselves at, at their beckon for, to bring in the great new, to reset the new utopia to a better, nicer world. Namaste. We're getting in line. Right on. Go check out Jared's channel. If you're checking this out, it's got good stuff. It, it, it's, it, you, you try to keep them short or is that just yeah, been uh, well, like I don't 20, know. 20, 30 minutes? The first two were only like 30 minutes, but. The others have been shorter than that. I think I'd try to keep them a little shorter. What funny stuff. So roundups is catching up and now maybe we can just get back to covering a single subject for a little bit longer. So thanks, Jerry. Yeah, no problem. Happy time. Sorry if I kept, I kept it 10 long. Ah, right no, no big deal. Okay. Thanks a bunch. All right. We'll see you later, man. Later.